Babies as the, as the King on the Bennington Show. Hello and welcome to Scope Talk Live. I'm your host, Chris Stanley, with my panel, Ron and Gail Bennington. Thanks, guys. Scope Talk Live. What are STL. We, what are we uh, doing? Chris, we're actually doing our show. But right see, now. you guys, you were a little bit late this morning, so we weren't able we're to do Scope Talk. We're a lot of bit talk. late today, if we're, you're going to be totally honest. We weren't able to do our normal slot for Scope Talk Live, so I thought we'd do it now. You know what this is? What's that? It's Perk Talk Live. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Stanley has taken the Percocets. I mean, this is, it's number one sign of addiction because <laughs> when you're taking medicine, you're not supposed to be thrilled about it. <laughs> it's great. So, uh, only addicted. This is so good. I'm yeah. so glad I had this surgery. <laughs> they give them to me and it's okay. Dude, I was watching you coming in on the, on the, uh, in the cab today. When you were doing your, uh, what do you call your show, Smoking with Chris? Smoking with Chris, 10.45 a.m. every Friday morning. Now, I'm wearing a heavy coat because it's chilly in New York City, and you were sweating like you were standing in front of a per furnace. I'm sweating like that right now because, well, I ate the, I ate the, per uh, the periscopes. I ate the Percocets. <laughs> oh, God. I ate the Percocets, and um, they make me sweaty. They dehydrate me. <clears throat> I opened Smoking with Chris today uh, eating Percocets. Yes, we're all yeah, we saw very it. aware it's of very that. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't describe to me. Hey, Everybody's guys, I've got these drugs here. <laughs> yeah. Everybody in 11th grade thinks that you're a real rebel. <laughs> uh, all right, so we will open the show with a little. What do you? Uh, what is it called again? Scope Talk Live, STL. I know, Scope Talk Live is a. Uh, it's a little one of uh, Chris's eight shows that he does on Periscope. Yeah, Smoke with Chris, four twenty, blaze it. Um, and then there's also you know Mets. I like to keep the Mets people happy. And then there was just like Uber rides. Yeah, with I, Chris. I was thinking about um, doing a new one where yeah. get to know your Uber driver. Right. Where I inter interview Uber drivers. And then um, I think Periscope. there's even a new one called Tom Sharpling beat the shit out of Chris. Oh really? Yeah. Yes. Guess what? Tom Sharpling could eat my ass because I beat the shit out of him. Because if you were watching Scope Talk on um, on Wednesday night, guess what? Someone came up to me in the street, called me the Roman Polanski of Periscope. They could have just called you the Roman Polanski of New York City. Of life. <laughs> because Tom Sharpling of The Best Show tried to talk shit about my camera skills. Because what? while you were talking, I saw it drop down. I saw a close-up of your chest for nine seconds. I got a bad arm. Here's the thing. Chris... Tom Sharpling invites me on his show, the best show, a classy show. Yeah. And look at what you've started. Look what you've done. I he started. Great, uh, I love the opening to that show, too. Isn't it great? Yeah. Makes Joe look like an asshole <laughs> right now. <It> <laughs> Fuck. All right, wait. You can show Joe through his monitor, oh, yeah. Roman Plansky, of touching kids. No, of film. <laughs> yeah. Film. Oh, wait. <laughs> why? Why are you dancing cool and um, putting up a cap? <laughs> yeah, I'm modeling. All right, well, Scope Talk Live, uh, which Gail and I somehow get to be on Chris's panel. Yes. Love it. Um, Thanks, guys, for being on the panel. It's just about periscopes that we've seen. It's uh, usually a bi-weekly show, <laughs> Mondays and Fridays, I feel. Well, it, because normally we're excited to be in here. By the way, uh, people were saying, hey, how come you didn't do... Uh, Opie Radio it was actually Denny was bothering me about it while I was taking a piss, and <laughs> as always, for no apparent reason, I br I blame it on the Stangle Brothers. Right? Oh, yeah. I go, the Stangles are keeping us off there, and then, and I'm very proud, and I want us to copyright this, Chris. Done. Uh, well, you haven't even heard me say it well, yet. You know, I said that they've got a Stangle hold over. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Copyright. <laughs> now, They're stangling the life out of me. <laughs> You've got to uh, go out and do a parody song of Stranglehold with Stanglehold. Put me in a Stanglehold, baby. Uh, that's just the beginning mm -hmm. of it. I mean, I love what you're doing yeah. with it, but yeah. I don't know whether Joe... Why aren't we getting a close-up on Joe now, too? Oh. Roman Joe, Polanski? Yeah. I'm glad that it'll, it'll be in his signature falsetto, though. Yeah. That why why are you just so well? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything is Prince nineteen, <laughs> but nineteen seventy nine Prince before when he was still the underground guy. By the way, why weren't you offended when someone called you the Roman Plansky of anything? Rom Chinatown. All right, he directed Chinatown. All yes. right, that's a that's a compliment. And then two years later, he drugged a thirteen year old girl and had anal sex with her and ran out of the country. And today. It was in the news today yes. that they're trying to get him back in the country. He can't do it. Guess what? Yeah, you can't get him, America. You can't get him. He's out there. This guy should have just went and did his time. <laughs>
Like a gentleman. Yes. Like a gentleman like, does. Yeah, like a good dude. Look, I could separate the personal life from the art. And that's, I don't think that's a problem. I think his 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 work you... speaks for itself. <laughs> what, what was that camera angle? I don't know. Sharpling is so correct uh, about everything. No, Sharp, Sharpling is correct about nothing. I also like, the, this is something new. Now, Chris, I know that you go to Russia, right? Oh, yeah, all the time. So this is my new bit because apparently this thing that we did when we were in third grade isn't known around the world. So when you're in... China, Japan, Russia, a lot of those people will just read whatever you put up. Normally, right. I'll just put up New York City and they'll go like this. They're doing all like Russian talk and then do uh, New York City. But then I'll just put in Mike Hunt as <laughs> if it was third grade and they all fall for it. <laughs> so I even did it to two girls from L.A. last <laughs> night as well until they finally caught on to when, when I did Mike Hunt. Hunt is soaked. That's when they started laughing and said, "Good joke." <laughs> They're the best. You got me. Yeah. So let's it's try for them, though. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's try to scope that back out there. What have you periscoped uh, on this week? Um. Well, this week I saw a great periscope of Jenny Hut. You watch um, a lot of Hut. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I watch. I mean, honestly, she got me into Periscope. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, she was really uh, the first person I followed on Periscope. Well, she was on it when it was just called Para. They hadn't even finished wow. the name yeah. by the time she went on. But she she broke the Jared Fogle story for me of the Jared Fogle tapes, <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm actually getting news on Periscope now. She, I, I, I saw that one because the title that she put up was. Guys, aren't you so grossed out by Jarrett Fogle <laughs> and the girl who videotaped him? And she's doing all this and she's late for her radio show. Yeah. Because she's periscoping what should be the topic of her show. Uh, but she also addressed that I am uh, always welcome as a guest on her show. On her so. periscope show or a radio show? Uh, I don't think she sees a difference, really. Yeah, much like true. us now. Yeah, <laughs> much like her life is the same. Uh, what else did I, uh, well, you know, who's got me a little bit too, uh, cause I saw it this morning. I guess it was done in the middle of the, uh, night. Danny go lightly did, uh, I love Anthony. And I thought, Oh my God, here it is. She's trying to get in, but she was showing an Anthony Jeselnik, uh, uh set. <laughs> and I'm like, Great title. Yeah. You know, clickbait that shit. Got she em. is clickbait all over it. that. Yeah. She is. She knows how to reel them in. Yeah. She's always got like hashtag sexy teens or yeah, something. Yeah, those are the ones I won't click on. I just, <laughs> I really it loud. Uh, no. I jump in. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. I saw some girls in Alabama um, having twerk contests oh, and they were just twerking okay. it. They were just twerking it. It was great. Well, I, uh, I saw one in LA that was definite less than zero. <laughs> what, what's the writer's name who? Uh, Brett Easton Ellis. Yeah. It was. This was Brett Easton Ellis's stuff where a girl was rubbing herself and Hell like yeah. you know how like people will ask them people to do stuff and they don't. Of course, yeah. These girls were like, "Great idea! <laughs> we're getting in the shower." And it was three kind of chubby, trashy LA girls yeah. and their gay friend. And I'm like, "This is Brett Easton Ellis." <laughs> Perfect. Just depravity. Yeah. I like that. That's still going on. And they're like, I like being on E and doing heroin. Wow. Great. You sound great. And they're just beat looking and they're like 21, <laughs> you know, used up. Yeah. Just so haggard. Yeah. Just finished <laughs> at age 21. <laughs> but their parents are rich and they're in L.A. with some kind of odd dream, you know. It's a glamorous life, really. Yeah. They're all excited because they went to a party that, you know, was thrown by the grandfathered TV show, whatever it happened to be. It seemed like it was glamorous to them, but to us, the viewer, sad, sad. Well, there was a big uh, smoking with Chris this morning as well. The smoking with Chris. Um, taking the buttered roll for breakfast was a shocker for me. What's wrong with that? A butter roll is a great breakfast. That's a really and a, weird and a breakfast. Red Bull. It's a Jersey breakfast. That's a bizarre breakfast. Yeah, it's a. It's, the only place that that's well known, hard roll and butter, is is Jersey for breakfast. That's I, their. That I call a Jersey donut. That feels to me like a breakfast. Like, oh, I forgot my wallet, but I do have this quarter in my back pocket. Hey, yeah. I also tipped the guy like three bucks on Two that bucks. on that butter roll and <laughs> Two Red bucks, Bull. So be easy with it. <laughs> <laughs> and you missed that. All right, look, I had a, I had a guest cancel on me. Uh, so Who's your I, guest? Uh, it was Liam from the booking department. Oh, you know why? Was uh, He's been stangleholed. Oh, God damn it. <laughs>
Got a stangle hold on me, baby. <laughs> Is that it? That's all you have so far? Uh, I got the sweet guitar lick. Yeah, let's hear it. That's that's such like a seventies cop theme, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the greatest thing Ted Nugent ever did, and he's well aware of it too. He knows. He knows. Oh, it. he knows. Well, no. Then also, he killed a small deer with a bow, so that was pretty cool. Manly. I, oh, I got the best uh, for Scope Talk Live. This is my new favorite person out there. Okay. A uh, young crazy kid making things happen calls himself Intern Alex. Oh, what? The f- and he's street. He's got scope bros. Yeah. He gets his I, shares from his scope bros. I have the scope bros. I started scope bros. Yeah, mm. but people are actually calling him the Roman Polanski of Periscope. I mean, he I is. heard someone That's say that. That's mine. Yeah. I'm the Roman Polanski of Periscope. Scope bros is mine. If you want to be a scope bro, <laughs> hit that share button. That's mine. I invented it. Intern Alex, you're in a world of shit. Yeah, you ripped me off. You got it from him is what you mean. No, no, no. Like, he you got it from it. me. Oh, right? doesn't matter who did it first. It's who does it better, and he's young, and he's fresh, and he's sitting in the middle of Chattaboogie, a party town. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's got a lot of great co-workers. I mean, he had a lot of great guests on his uh, Periscope. I had the Statue of Liberty on my show <laughs> on Smoke with Chris just this morning. The fucking Statue of Liberty. It wasn't the real one. It I, was that Mexican we, guy who <laughs> dresses up that way, we, who sometimes I see eating lunch. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I know. Why and can't he speak? Well, it terrified me. It's, uh, I guess he just doesn't want to give away the illusion, you know, yeah, that sure. he is the Statue of Liberty. It was a huge booking. I like to see Alex, the intern or whatever. Intern Alex, get that in Chattanooga. Huh? No. He's ripping me off. What's his radio station? It's, uh, I believe it's Hits 96. Uh, here's the other thing. Why is he uh, still an intern after seven years? I don't get it. That's his thing. You know what I mean? He's intern Alex. He must have really... I put him in afternoon drive, counting down the hits. I'll tell you what, though, when he took those stairs and he was running down the stairs yeah. and screaming, it was so funny. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that better than him. You should go down all thirty-six floors here. Like it reminded me of when you were running in the rain and smoking, but it's like funnier, like right. a funnier Give me, version. Come on, of that. I did it first. Look, you're the Roman Polanski of Subway. We no. all get that. <laughs> Polanski of Periscope. Look, look, see how bad you're directing I'm this. I'm very sweaty. It's pouring off me. <laughs> Check it out. I, I, are you eating like... <laughs> yeah, get a close-up of you. Nice I, close. I can feel it dripping into my eyes. Uh, I don't know whether you're eating perks or just like hot fucking barbecue charcoals. <laughs> Why are they heating you up like this? They, they dehydrate you, so it's forcing me to sweat more than I usually sweat. Does, I, does the Red Bull help with the dehydration? I feel like it makes it faster. It makes, you know, it makes me feel faster, you know? Makes me feel faster. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, intern Alex, <laughs> shit list. Moaned. He just uh, moaned. Sharply, <laughs> shit list. Scope bros, share it. Mine. What I don't know, dude. This? Give me some hearts, too. Scope Talk Live, STL. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are on his show, STL. Thanks, panel. Thank you guys for showing up today. I really appreciate it. Seriously. No one ever calls their panel a panel. We're all individuals. <laughs> Thanks, panel. You guys are scope bros, for real. I feel like we're the OG scope bros. Oh, I, think I don't think we had enough chance to jump into the opening of our show. I mean, we opened with the king, and then all of a sudden I start hearing screaming about scope talk. I know. We had a really great rockabilly. I know. Week. It was the Wanda end of Jackson yeah. and Buddy Holly. Yeah. And then the Roman Polanski of the Stangleholds <laughs> jumps on top of us and takes over the show. Look, it's, it's, this, is, this is this goddamn Periscope Network. STL's a big show. Oh, by the way, Denny also gave me uh, a, a two sheet for Halloween songs. If we want to play, oh, it. great! Yeah, <laughs> Denny hasn't been back on the show since I, I forgot. I yelled at him one day, and I thought in a joking manner, but his feelings were really hurt. But it seems like you guys are mending it now. I mean, well, after we just that pee talk, we're, yeah, yeah, we're on the same piss fucking schedule. You know, <laughs> yeah. does he have a Periscope show? Everybody has one. I mean, the f- oh, I saw this uh, thing that they've got out. Uh, it's a piece of furniture, a desk, I guess, that you can stay on the Internet with it 24 hours a day that you can, you know, it will always be on Periscope right. or whatever. Yes. And I'm not even making this up. Guess what they're naming it? It's called the Jenny Hutch. And it's just <laughs> oh, this little, perfect. I guess she's going to be talking about it. 
She's obviously the spokeswoman. Yeah. And then every once in a while, her husband walks by and goes, are you still on that? <laughs> Come back. You need to support her. He doesn't support her very much. He doesn't care. She he's has hating. a scope dream, and she's chasing it every day. And she's chasing something. I don't know what it is. Chasing that dragon. Chasing no, depression. She's not chasing the dragon. <laughs> You're chasing the dragon, sweaty. It's just, it's just so hot in here. You're the no, it isn't. No, it's it's real freezing. Chilly, I'm still dude. wearing my jacket. I'm soaked in sweat. Yes, because you're eating perks one after another. Yeah, I am. When are you off the meds? Um, in four weeks or three weeks. Three weeks. Three yeah. weeks officially. Four weeks actually <laughs> in your world. At least that's you know that's what they say. That's when the arm comes out of the sling. That's what they told me. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you're in perks the entire time. And that oh. arm is not going to come out of the sling in three weeks if you're using it as much as I see you using it. It's going to come out. I'm going to physical therapy. It's going to be great. What is your physical therapy? Perks? No, it's I have to move my arm in different angles. It doesn't seem like it's doing much, but apparently it's good for me. Let me give yourself a nice close-up. All right, let's see. Sharpling has tweeted something. i got to go to the glasses. Um... All right, Sharpling said this. I love Chris Stanley trash talking me as he descends into full on badly dead mode. <laughs> hey, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> Bad Lieutenant's a great movie. Which one? Both. You got to pick two. Wait a minute. I want you to just see that camera angle as you wipe your nose. The camera just does this huge, crazy uh, sweep. I got one arm and the. The sweat is just pouring down my nose. Now, let me also say this. Yeah. Fuck you for going against Harvey Keitel. No New Yorker in the history of the world would pick something over Harvey Keitel. Why would I you love do Harvey it? Keitel, but I just I love Nicolas Cage, too. And I just the second one is just so good. It I, makes no sense. It doesn't make sense. The first one. What are you doing sweating like that? I don't know. Man. Why don't you sit down? Is it because okay. you're scoping? I don't, it's is it Percocet. <laughs> All right, by the way, we're doing the Bennington Family Thanksgiving mm -hmm. at the Hard Rock. We're overwhelmed with requests. I don't know what we're going to do about it. Um, it's just at least four or five times bigger than what we can even do. Right. So you said full lottery mode for this? Yeah, this is full lottery mode uh, for uh, if and if you want to jump into the lottery. I just want to see how far me and Gail look away from this. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You can email benningtongigs at gmail.com. That's happening November 18th at the Hard Rock Cafe at 7 p.m. Email benningtongigs at gmail.com for a chance to win free tickets. And I'm a little nervous about this because people are offering Chris all kinds of tchotchkes. <laughs> I might have to take it away from Chris being the one who decides. Oh, I can't be bribed, Ron. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. With three Marlboro Reds and a value, you would give up your home. <laughs> but yeah, Bennington gigs at gmail.com. Full bad lieutenant mode. New Orleans style. To the break of dawn, baby. Where's the kibble? Give me that kibble. <laughs> of course you know the jerk-off scene, don't you? You've got that on a fucking vine at your house. <laughs> <laughs> projected on the yeah. on the side of his wall <laughs> the side of his dick <laughs> be a small projection oh, oh shit oh, come on go on snap son yeah. well, i guess this is going to turn into a roast battle <laughs> cuz everything does uh <clears throat> let's see uh this is fucking funny from Queen Elizabeth. She said, I had a C-section and took a Tylenol afterwards. Hicks is a pussy. Hey, guess what? All right. I had seven anchors put into my shoulder, whatever that means. <laughs> and, what do we have to deal with now? <laughs> we have to and, talk to this person <laughs> in the back of his fucking head. <laughs> you look fucking crazy. Like, from our angle, you look like a crazy person. From this angle, we all look great. So I, mean, I think that's and on Periscope. So, you know, that's what it says STL. Now I'm just staring at the back of your sweaty neck. <laughs> it's so soaked in fucking water. You know what? This is what it's good. This is going to be the tape they show on CNN when they do the story, did a shock jock show make their <laughs> insane <laughs> producer overdose? <laughs> they <laughs> laughed as he sweat. No, I'm good. I'm not going to OD. I'm good. Finally. STL. STL. Let's go talk live.
Scope Bros. Share the broadcast, Scope Bros. All right, uh, Lauren down the hall said, what's up? Got my costume on for the SXM Halloween party. Come on down, Lauren. We'd love to see you. Uh, let me guess what you're dressed as this year. Lolita? <laughs> Love of my life. She's wanted to be on Smoking with Chris for a while, and you haven't had her on there. She, uh, you have to smoke if you're on sco- uh, Smoking with Chris. So, well, well, how hard is that to smoke? Yeah, okay. Everyone some can some do people, it. some people won't smoke. They're like, no, I can't do it. Say who? <laughs> who would Who'd say you try that? To get on Nancy Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get. I think I tried to get Mark Zito on, and he says he doesn't smoke. I was like, all right, fine, fuck you. Well, I, well just give him some of that nicotine gum. <laughs> that should count. Yeah. All right. Here's some chew. Here's some skull. <laughs> That'd you should cool. always have a blue on you, too, because that's not hard to smoke. I was thinking about trying to get some vapors on, but it's not a cigarette. Like David Tell said, I'm smoking science. <laughs> <laughs> you had a problem with this? I'm smoking science. <laughs> um, so, Smoke Talk. Or spoke, wait a minute. What is the name of this? Uh, <laughs> Scope Talk Live. Scope Talk, there's so many shows now. Hell yeah. I thought it was Smoke Talk Live. <laughs> Named after Smoking with Chris episodes. I kept calling it Talk Scope Live after. Right. Oh, oh, Sexy Devil is here. Nice. Sexy Look devil. at the Sexy oh Devil. Oh, my God, it is not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You are a Foxy Devil. She is. Am I on the scope? Yeah, you, you are. are. Hi. You're Hi. being scoped. Hi, welcome to Scope Talk Live. Um, Lauren, thanks for being on the panel. <laughs> Now, you don't have to. They're not ears, they're horns. <laughs> <laughs> now, devil why are the... you dressed like the sexy devil? It's it's just ears. just And red lipstick, too. I sent it. See? Periscope. See. You know, let me just say this. You see, this is what has kept Cousin Brucey alive. Oh. You know what I mean? This keeps his <laughs> heart beating. Because she has come in like the... Fourth wife had just taken over his life. I can't even get close to him anymore in the in the halls. Oh God, no! Yeah, she's giving something. I think it has to go through Lauren. So Lauren is uh, our friend. Lauren down the hall, uh, Staten Island girl. Yes, really like the movie Working Girl. Um, I thought yeah. this might be fun. You could dance up there in your sexy devil thing to Stanglehold. Uh, no. The new, it's the new theme of Opie's show. <laughs> I can't get back on the show anymore. I've because been, of the stangles. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been stangleholded. it. Yeah. You know? And the last time I went on, I heard a lot of good, positive feedback. Yeah, you, know? you did. That's yeah. right. People uh, people loved it. So give us a little stanglehold to play that, and uh, the sexy devil can just give us a slight dance. Note. I can dance in my seat to it. Yeah, well, okay, that's perfect. Oh, wait, it's not a song? It is a song. He's too stupid to realize he can hit play. Stanglehold, baby! Oh, <laughs> the song, Joe. Joe. <laughs> You're making STL look bad. I like that he tried to do both, getting the song and still Stanglehold. I will. I hear you can dance there along to this. Give it. Some, Give us the volume. And the volume in the room too, Chris. No. You know what I mean? Now we got hot dancing girls. We peaked. Yeah. We peaked. That's it. Um, but yeah, I want to get her and, and Danny on together for a contest. Yes, I would love to do that. Game yeah. show. Game show, king of the oldies, king or queen of the oldies. Okay. Yeah. I think that'd be fair. Now, what time is the, the big uh, Sirius XM social today? It's actually going on right now. Well, I, I heard it was, oh, the pizza party? Yeah. Who's our interns today? We have both Cashmere and Jam Band. All right, let those guys know that they are in charge of getting pizza for this show. They can't head on down there. Who's got the big funny content, uh, funny uh, costume? There was um, actually not a lot of people are dressed up. There was one guy dressed like Indiana Jones upstairs, and that was it. That was it. Good. That was it. I like the fact we're adults here. (laughs) (laughs) I try to get in the spirit. I try. Yeah, because it's madness with the TV shows. Every TV show is ridiculous. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know what? We could send. Well, we'll send Dan down to. Now we better not send him down the scope. There, somebody might get their feelings hurt. You know what I mean? I was right. going to send him down to do the contest, but Dan has a way of pushing the envelope. Well, and you know his edgy comedy. Hey Dan, when is your uh, web series going to be? Do you know? Do you know when you start shooting that? Oh, we started shooting already, actually. Yeah, and so we start. We shot the first episode, and we're going to shoot the next five. Within the next 
two or three three weeks we're going to start. I saw a, a a trailer for another web series that you were in. Oh, is it the Mike Brown one? Yes. Yes, that episode actually dropped. The, no. That's on that's on YouTube. What's the Where name can of that? Where you find it? It's a, uh, I know the title of the web series is Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and I'm a white guy who they bait into saying the N word a lot. But did they? And I, did, and I did very well. I might add. <laughs> well, you're a natural. Uh, but did they? Did they bleep it in the trailer? They did. Yeah. What? It's the internet already. <laughs> they wrote the bit. They produce it. Then they bleep themselves. Not only that, Mike, who's a very funny comic, uh, wrote the script and was encouraging me to say it. And he's like, I right, just say it, just say it. And so the first take we do it, I say it. And then he's like, whoa, cut, cut. Whoa, whoa. You said it with the ER. And I'm like, you you wrote that. And he's like, you took it too far, man. <laughs> Mike Brown did that? Yeah, Mike there, did there's that. There's an interview with him tomorrow uh, on the iBang and talking about this. And we can stop, and, and we, we won't, won't stop. stop. Nice, Chris. Won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't do a close-up of yourself why that <laughs> happened. <laughs> that seems to be the big problem that people have with the Roman Polanski of Periscope, is that when his camera work. yeah his camera work that he puts an extreme close up on himself when he talks and we like, want stop not, not, like right on the mouth yeah <laughs> well make sure they know where the sounds come from by the way there is a, a an organization that wants to sponsor smoking with Chris I think it would be the first Periscope uh, sponsor uh, they're called Buttered Rolls of New Jersey. <laughs> And they just try to push the fact that, you know, why not have a buttered roll? You know what? You're going to make buttered rolls cool again. And that's what I love. Wait, they weren't cool for a time? Um, not with Don alcohol. All right. Look, look who came through for his jam band. An entire pizza. Woo! Yeah. This is the best Halloween ever. Now, is this Uncle Paul's pizza? No, it is not. It's not Uncle Paul's. That's insane. It's from Boca. All the way from Florida? Wow. <laughs> Oh, nice. Boker. Cold. Boker, as the Long Island Jews call it down there. <laughs> down at Boker. We're going to Boker this weekend. It's lovely. We've got a condominiums. Have you been to Boker? Boker's amazing. It's honestly like Long Island of the South. You got to <laughs> see my condo in Boker. Boker. <laughs> got you in a stangle hole, baby. I don't know why I can't come back on that show. Oh, Stanglehold. That was the first time I heard that. Stanglehold. Stanglehold. I just invented it today when I was doing a a new scope show called Pissing with Denny. Uh, (laughs) Trying to explain why it's so difficult for me to get on uh, Opie's show. All right, people are writing more stuff. Um, (laughs) Now, by the way, now listen, this is from Gina. Gail Ann loved you on the best show for life. And thanks for introducing us to Bennington Show and hashtag Smoking with Chris. You're all hilarious. So here's Gail going out, growing satellite as it is by getting new subscribers. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yeah. And growing Smoking with Chris. And you're trying to crush that by ruining my relationship with Tom Sharpling. That's just, you're that's a feud insane. with that's him. That's a gigantic mistake, dude. Your feud with him. Sharpling started it. Oh. Sharpling's the one who gave me all the shit. And then I got to, I had to let him know that people love my camera work. You're so worried about scope bros. <laughs> I'm worried about real bros. Wow. That's okay. fucking great, dude. Look, the real bros will always, they're, they're my bros. This is just something new. The scope bros. Hold Sh- on. You want to be a scope bro? Share on Periscope. <laughs> Look, I'll still keep my real bros as I grow my scope bros. Now, <laughs> scope bros. <laughs> Scope Bros is something that Chris says if you give him a share. You know who uh, 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 a Scope Bro is? Louis J. Gomez uh, uh, alerted uh, the iBang the other night that Shtick or Treat was going on in Brooklyn. 50, kind of 50 unknown comics or lesser known comics do impressions of classic comics. Okay. And then the guy who did Patrice O'Neill was amazing. Yeah? Amazing. Yeah. Um, it was kind of a, a fun. Mark Norman was the only one that I recognized that was on the show. But you didn't know that some of the other. Comics. I'm sure Dan does. Dan, do you? Uh, Dan do, knows do you all feel, the comics. What's that? He knows all the comics. Well, he knows the comics that play rooms that don't exist. 
rooms. Pop up. Yeah, pop, they are pop up rooms. <laughs> it's like a ninth floor of a Chinatown, and it's in an apartment. That's a good spot. And Dan's middling there. <laughs> do, do you know about this shtick or treat? Yeah, it's a great show. They do that every year. Uh, Mark Norman hosted, actually, so it's his annual show at Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. That's where Hannibal used to run his weekly show there. And the guy who did Patrice was Clark Jones, who's a super funny comic out of Chicago. He's a ama- He did an unbelievable... So you were watching, or you were there that night? I, I had to get there not till after the show was over, but uh-huh. I saw a video of Clark, and there were some other really good ones also. It was one of 18 shows that Dan did that night. <laughs> I, we ought to do a jump around with Dan, except for nobody wants to spend that much on the subway. I know. <laughs> I know. I would lose connection. But I've got, on, on Saturday, I'm going to be doing a couple things, two two things at the creek. One of them is kind of like shtick or treat, uh-huh. so I can periscope that, and then just a regular stand up show after that. Shtick or treat uh, rip off. It's a shtick or treat rip off. Yeah, it's yeah. even even lesser, some even lesser knowns. <laughs> doing if, even more lesser known. <laughs> exactly. If this was too star studded yeah. for you. Well, we're going to we're going to do something with Dan at the Bennington uh show. He's actually producing a segment for us with stand-ups. We're not, you know, not really ready to announce that yes. right now. No spoilers. But you have something you wanted to bring up, right? Yes, I just saw a tweet from Brad Steiner at Brad Stinks okay. when Gail Ann and the iBang talk about intern Alex and his hot new scope show Ode to Chris <laughs> Stanley equals greatest day of my career. Well, Brad Stinks. For, yeah. Yeah. For us, too. Really. Yeah, I mean, we're just is. excited to know about intern Alex. Yeah. Hey, Brad Stinks. Alex Stinks. <laughs> How about that, dude? All right. Because you're fucking running some crazy scope bro ripoff campaign when I'm the original scope bro guy. It's a stick or treat, really, if you think about it. Yeah. Scope or treat. Yeah. This is the one night that Dan gets to steal material and then <laughs> without everyone yelling at him. <laughs> what comedian are you going to do? Well, I did, the other day I did uh, a Bernie Max Def Jam set verbatim. Okay. And what are you going to do this week? On Saturday, I'm going to do this guy who you don't know, this uh, Asian dude who I think would be great on Thanksgiving. With very long hair, who I don't know, he was like born by the under the Manhattan Bridge. He's a very weird guy. His name is Phil Philly. Well, well, but while well, well, you're making fun of it, there's actually a hospital there, so it's a a fine place. Was he in a hospital? <laughs> nah, he should be though. <laughs> um. All right, let me hear just a little bit of your Bernie Mac then. I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. All right, I'm gonna tell you something straight off the motherfucking press. I didn't come up for no foolishness. In New York, goddamn y'all, motherfucker, women look good. Like a bacon egg sandwich, look good. <laughs> Love sex, love it. <laughs> Can't do shit no more. And I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm big boned. I'm heavy structure. I'm I, hung low. Let me if, tell you how pissed I am that he does that really well. I'm really, <laughs> really let down. Because here's the thing: I am like Bernie Mac. I just, I love that guy. That just made me want to watch that. Yeah, it's the funniest. I think it's the funniest TV stand-up set ever. Yeah, I know. I do feel like going back and watching it now, too. But everything he did, he ever did. Like, even a terrible movie like Mr. 3000, I never turned it off. Oh, yeah, because yeah. his delivery is out Amazing. of control. Amazing. He just, every word he says just oozes fun. Like, later in that set, he's like, women doing their thing, talk to you the way they want to talk to somebody. It don't make no more fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing. It's amazing. So when you were a kid, you memorized that on yeah, your own? Yeah, I would replay that like it was a song, <laughs> just over and over, like in the shower, just playing that shit. No, you didn't do blackface, did you? That would be fucking wrong. No, no. Come on, that's crude. <laughs> what's what's you're your problem with that? You know, it'd be more authentic. You're oh, seriously a perked up huh? fucking beast. <laughs> I wouldn't even let you sleep with this underage devil. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got a boyfriend in your life yet? I don't. Then this is on purpose. Then, no, right? it's you're not. doing it on purpose. I mean, you haven't had a boyfriend since I met no, you. No, I know. I just I don't date a lot, honestly. I don't. I'm always like I'm always here. You, I, Gail sees me all the time in the halls. Am I not here at any date park? Here. I am here. Then you're dating someone that you shouldn't be dating, <laughs> and it's a secret. <laughs> no. Maybe what you need is an office romance. She's got it's, one. She's. I don't know. Rob Cross. Rob Cross. <laughs> 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 
Like a dog, Rob Rob. Oh, I she in the house. Wait a minute. I thought that you were acting like she was the lucky dog because she got some that cross buns. <laughs> some that crossfire. <laughs> cross buns. <laughs> crossfire, oh, baby. Damn. Crossfire. <laughs> no, not Rob Rubs. Who, who is it then? Somebody Nobody. that you're not allowed there's to also, say. There's also policies intact that you can't date. I know, but I can. started a rumor long ago because I thought it was true that you were with Anthony. I, I know. That, that yeah. always comes up every time I'm in here. <laughs> <laughs> Could never avoid it. It just seems like it's so right. It's, we like a lot of the same things. That's where it ends. Okay. Right. Well, you like things, and he pretends he likes things. No. He gets <laughs> Me you. too. Yeah, I like that too so much. I've got one in the basement of my mansion. Why don't you come see it now? <laughs> that thing looks like a kids are us down there. Um, you know, uh, there was when I was watching the other night of the of the uh, shtick or treat. There was one woman in. The periscope that you, you know you write stuff in that was furious when ever anyone would do a uh, dead comic, like somehow that crossed the line. Really? Yeah, I think it was John Panette, and she was just fucking freaking out about. How dare you, yeah. sir? And the Patrice thing, I I, I I I felt like it was so great just to you know hear that material, yeah. somebody doing that material and doing it right. And Panette was Jesus Christ, was he a funny son of a bitch? I don't know. I'm starting to think we got better dead comics than we have live comics. Oh, yeah. Definitely. All the laughter in heaven. <laughs> Thank God for those uh, hologram tours. <sighs> I can't wait to get a Bernie Mac mm-hmm. hologram tour going. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to watch it in 3D. Anthony and um, Lauren invite me over in front of his big screen. <laughs> I'm going to stand right in the projection of the hologram. <laughs> I'm him. <laughs> I'm that person. <laughs> um, I, I guess we're done. Uh, scope talking. Uh, I mean, is there anything else uh, to get into, Chris? I think we've had a well-rounded STL um, uh, for this uh, show. <laughs> well-rounded. Did, 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 By really, the way, uh, speaking of STL, I heard you talking about your chlamydia that you got rid of <laughs> in college. That was yeah. No big deal. <laughs> It oh, was boy. the big deal. We could uh, antibiotics. Everything was great. Antibiotics. <laughs> it. What, what's it? No, it's not a big deal for men to get it. This yeah. is what we were talking about before. Yeah. Women, it could be dangerous. Is yeah. chlamydia the one where they put the swab in your pee hole? Yeah. Oh, they boy. took a Q-tip, fuck my dick with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I do that anyway, so it wouldn't even it would be fine with me. You gotta keep it clean. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> Little dabble do you? I like this. Uh, too much. <laughs> I would bet it would feel good just like when you do it in your ears. Oh no! uh, you get that no! spot Eargasm. No. I love that feeling. Yeah, when you hit that one spot and it just goes down your spine. No, not when they're looking for the chlamydia. It just hurts. <laughs> You know, that's how they used to, in like in the old West days, they used to fix VD by taking a hot wire on a man, right? No. And then shoving it in up his pistol <laughs> yeah. to, to kind of sear that area. <laughs> and I'm like, why did they ever stop? <laughs> Seems like it worked. No. <laughs> Antibiotics. That's what works. <laughs> why is the emphasis on by there? <laughs> I thought this is how everyone said it. Erwin. Erwin. Everybody says antibiotics. Everybody ain't clugging tipsy. Love that song. Yeah. By the way, when you uh, go on Periscope and you're going around the world, China, South America, Russia, it's hard to believe how big Drake is. <laughs> they are playing him everywhere. They love Drake. Yeah. And it's like, call me on your cell phone. <laughs> you're like, why is this song so gigantic? What's that other good one that we love so much, Chris? Uh, it's like... Uh, I don't love it, but the song is "We Were at the Bottom." Now started we're at the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> started at the bottom, now the whole team here. Why don't you like that? Because he didn't start at the bottom. He started on fucking Degrassi, the Next Generation. The He's bottom. a rich kid actor. Canadian TV. Yeah. Come on, Everyone dude. Loved that show. You can't get any lower than Canadian TV. <laughs> it's not the bottom. Yeah. Started at the bottom, now we're here. Started at the bottom, now the whole team here. That's you, good. You want to go, Dan's doing a salute to black people thing where he rips <laughs> off Bernie Mac, and you should go do that with him. You can come out to that song. You can come out, period, Dan. <laughs> you can finally come out. It's safe here for Admit you to it do it. Admit it on STL. Admit it. Do it. You won't do it. He's Fine. terrified. Whatever. 
started at the bottom. That's good. Now, by the way, Chris, you were talking about you're buying new shirts, right? Because you have to have button shirts. Yeah, I, I have to um, now where all my shirts need to be buttoned while my arm's in the sling. But we've seen you on those stupid plaid things for how long? You've worn, you've got button shirts. Yeah, I have no. like no, well, I have like four. Yeah. And I don't want to do like laundry, so I went on jcpenny.com oh, and got some uh, nice button-down shirts, fourteen ninety-nine on sale. They came in yesterday. This is one of them. Check it out, Scope Bros. It's very, uh, very shiny. Is it? Yeah, it's got a nice sheen to it. That's, that's a sweat. sweat. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's called perk sweat. It's just pouring off me. Think about Chris. Look at him. He's taken off now with his new show. I guess you could say he started at the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> Start at the bottom, now I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you do love it. Start at the bottom, now the whole team here. Bottom, now we're here. Start at the bottom, now the whole team scoping. Oh, Jesus. He what tried up, to parry it. He tried to parry it. Scope Bros, share. Actually, is there any reason why we just don't do this throughout the whole show anyway? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, we can do this. You know, my, my I was, phone's about to die. I need, to, I need a charger. Well, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna close it down. Oh, okay. We're gonna close this um, bitch down. Um, yeah, we will take a break and come back and start the show. Maybe yeah. even from the beginning, do the song. All yeah, over. why not? Same song. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep rockabilly. Is there a rockabilly that uh, that you'd like to hear? Yeah, let's uh, let's pick a different one. I'm wondering if you and Lauren, because Lauren likes the early hits as well. Do you uh, have a, a favorite rockabilly song? We we did some Ro Wanda Jackson this week. Uh, we did Buddy Holly. Oh, gosh. Buddy Holly. Yeah. yeah. She's so oh, yeah. stumped. She's so stumped. <laughs> so sad. Well, well, we already did Buddy Holly this week. What about the killer? How about we come back with the killer? Jerry huh? Lee? Would you consider Jerry Lee rockabilly because I don't know if of I the would. Uh, piano? Is yeah. Too strong, I think. Yeah, it's almost like it's the the piano thing. But I I love the killer too, Chris. You know why? Why's that? I don't know, you had the left hand of a black man and the right hand of a white or whatever it was. Perfect. I don't remember what that lie was, but it, it seemed as a way it was like like a nice statement. And then some oddly racist right. for no <laughs> apparent reason. My phone's on 3%. Just oh. like giving everyone a heads up. So is your fucking brain on 3%. <laughs> I'm telling your family I got to pull the plug until I remember they're already on the other side waiting for you. They were at the bottom. Now they're there. All right. That's Drake. Terrible. Drake. Big up, Drizzy. I think that's what they call him, Drizzy. <laughs> Jimmy from fucking Degrassi, yo. I know where you're from, dude. You got shot in the back by Rick, and now you're in a fucking wheelchair. All right, you got him. Oh, I have an artist. I yeah. know who we could do. Who's that? What about Roy Orbison? He's uh, rockabilly, no? Roy is rockabilly? Okay. Don't okay. you think? Yeah. Let's come back with it. This is a uh, Bennington show. STL. Thanks, guys. All right, Gail, you are 100% right. That man was rockabilly. Yeah, that was a rockabilly... Uh... Big time rockabilly song. Roy Orbison. Um, just another salute to the dead that we do here at Halloween every night, every week. Well, this is officially mischief night tonight, so go out and fuck up your neighbor's houses. I never did that. Well, I was a good kid. No, you were in Florida, and it wasn't. It didn't have a big push in oh. Florida. In my That's neighborhood, <laughs> it was more important than Christmas. <laughs> Everybody was just... Pumped up. Well, you were two things. You were pumped up about mischief night to fuck up other people's houses. And then you're also fucked up to defend your own house. Yeah. I didn't really know much about it until uh, I moved upstate to go to school. Yeah. And uh, went to uh, the grocery and had to show my ID in order to buy a dozen eggs. They, I forgot that they would. Yeah. Stuff like spray paint, um, toilet paper. They did not want kids going out and buying Yeah, so themselves. I had to prove that I was old enough and responsible enough to handle eggs you the day before Halloween. <laughs> I eat eggs, <laughs> this lady. Is, this is for my nourishment and protein. I like this in the morning with my pizza and coffee. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Breakfast of champs. I guess no one 17 bakes a cake, so <laughs> right. they knew that was going down. Coming up a little bit, uh, your protege is going to be promoting something cashmere. Yes, I'm very excited for it. And what's the name of the bit? Fashion and... The name of the bit is 12 Comedians with Real Style. <sighs> well, Bernie Mac should be on there. I mean, we were bringing him up earlier. And if yeah. you want Dan to do an impression... He's there for he's it. He's ready so... at all times. 
I believe Dan helped him with that. Dan, a kid who has zero style. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's got that one good jacket. Yeah, I can't wait. But he for can't his, follow it up. Yeah, I can't wait for his web series to come out. So I'm excited about it. <laughs> I can't wait. And did, did the budget stay where you guys thought it was going to stay? We we got we got more money than we needed. Yeah, with Ooh. the same money that you told me was more than you needed for how many episodes? We're doing uh, six up front. So this is what you told me the guy was putting up. Is that still the budget? Uh, we got we got a little more. That much? Yeah, one one more. So, okay. So that you can stay under and do six episodes. Yeah, we can stay under that for sure. Now, uh, how long is each episode? Well, probably, probably. I mean, the scripts we wrote were like four to five minutes. Okay. Um, because I'm thinking about us doing a web series at some point. I would love that. Yeah. Let's do it. Why? You got your own. What are you? Are you, are you the Roman Plansky of web series now? <laughs> no, it's Chris. No. No, we might do We might do one later down the road. Just because it looks like it's fun to do. Yeah, it would be a blast. But I could go out and probably get a sponsor for us to cover that. You know? Yes, this is a perfect idea. I could call it Booby Dooby Records and Tapes. <laughs> is Roy Orbison from Memphis? Uh, I don't know if he's originally from Memphis. I mean, certainly he was one of the early Sun Records guys. Um, but I don't know. Mississippi, uh, Arkansas. His place of origin. Yeah, any of those places. Where's he from? Hendersonville, Tennessee. Okay. Okay. So that makes him Memphis. Because mm-hmm. um, Memphis is one of the GPSs I can't wait to do. I'm very excited about yeah. that one. He's yeah. from Texas, not Tennessee. He died in Tennessee. He died in Tennessee, but oh, he's from on, Vernon, dude. You Texas. can't fuck up, man. I know. You can't fuck up. You fucked up. So many of the, by the way, so many of the early rock guys were from Texas, and they never get the push for that. Yeah, Texas, they all. Yeah, they all moved east during that time. Well, but the there's something you know. There's great storytellers in Texas. You know, great songwriters, great uh, novelists. It's just they got a great history there. You know. And also for shooting at, at cars that are driving by. I mean, they got both. Sure. They have the fun as well. You're right. <laughs> they put the fun back in Texas, I like to say. Because <laughs> it really isn't there. You can't have <laughs> Texas without F-U-N. Uh, the modern day Roy Arbison, known as Justin Bieber, he's back in the news. Gail, you sent this into the iBank today. What's going on with Biebs? He is not doing well. First of all, he had a... A, a radio appearance. He's on tour right now, and he had a radio appearance in Spain uh-huh. where he just walked out in the middle of the interview. Like a man, <laughs> you, he has this look in his eyes like he's dead inside. Did anything, did they say anything mean to him or? No, I mean, it was just regular corny just kind ra- of yeah. radio stuff. So they're like kind of saying, hey, we want to do, we want to do a YouTube video with you. And like, we're going to get something like thousands of millions of followers or right. something like that. He's, they're saying something like that. And he's like, oh yeah, great. And <laughs> just walks out and they're like, hey, Justin. And they said that people were trying to grab him in the hallway and he's like yeah i'll be right back and he just got into the he just got into his car and left the last thing that he was saying was wild cat he's actually taken off both of his shoes and one of his socks <laughs> and <laughs> what the hell's wrong with <laughs> that's light of the movie right <laughs> that you're watching tv what the hell's wrong with him <laughs> So he does this, and then the following night, yeah. well, first we should probably just, I want you to oh, see yeah, okay. just his face when he does it. De América del Norte. Mejores fans, que es una look. Who, who takes the look on you? He looks because wired, like he doesn't understand anything. Great woman, so. sí. Any woman? Do you think it's su yeah. madre? There's no woman. No, there's no woman. Right no now. woman? Uh, no. You? <laughs> what do you mean? On your own, your look? Who's getting dressed you? You choose your own looks. So. Yeah. Oh, who gets? Yeah, I, I dress myself. Okay. <laughs> I dress myself. <laughs> oh, cool. Bueno, vamos a ver. Tenemos a Justin Bieber en you. <laughs> eh, tenemos muy poco tiempo para estar con él. Es una pena. God, Spanish people are attracted men and women. Pintar internet, dice oh, yeah. así. Venga. We want to to make a, like a crazy video. We want to break the internet. So <laughs> we now you, we got you here. Crazy and video. We got friends of us. <laughs> they are the biggest YouTubers in Europe. They, 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 they got a lot. 
hundreds and millions sí, of, vamos a, of followers. Sí, followers. Sí, los vamos a presentar. Sí, vamos a presentárselos. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Come with us. Come with us. Yeah. 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 And they okay. are YouTubers. Vamos aquí. Come with us. Here, 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 here. Here, here. Justin Nunca volvió. What's that mean? And he never returned. <laughs> That's fucking great. So he has this situation. Then he ends up the next night in Oslo. <laughs> this is last night. Yeah. And he's doing a televised, um, a televised uh, concert. Yeah. And one of the fans in the front row spills something across the stage. I guess she had a drink in her hand. She spills something across the stage. And I don't know why, but he's the one cleaning it up. And he gets so frustrated, he just walks off. So this is two in a row. This is two fucking in a row. He just walks out of the middle of the concert. That one's up as well, I think. These are great. Why is he cleaning it up? Guys, yo, listen to me. Are you listening? <laughs> okay, I'm trying to wipe the floor. Give me a second. <laughs> 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 My God! What? He just throws off his jacket and he walks off because he's trying to clean it up. And I don't know what they're doing to make it more difficult. I think he's <laughs> probably grabbing his arm and trying to fuck with him and shit. And he just walks wow. out. He's losing it. This poor kid is losing it. It's like a baby version of what Axl Rose went through in the '90s. Like Axl would have dove into the crowd and started punching little girls, but. <laughs> But then the next day, you know, he's he's writing um, on Instagram an apology. And he's like, listen, guys, I'm really tired. I'm under a lot of stress right oh, now. Oh, that's so sad. I know. And the poor kid can't. I mean, normally you would say take a vacation, but somebody's going to be taking pictures of his dong. He can't relax. He can't. Yeah, he can't just chill for five minutes. But, uh, you know, who loves him is uh, Pete Davidson. The first time. Pete Davis did our show. He was just like talking about Bieber and hoping for a comeback and stuff. Mm. And remember, we were like, well, that would be great, wouldn't it? We're just like, huh? Oh, it's an odd thing what? this kid's Strange. talking about. So that's when we were like, oh, yeah, you are really young. You're just <laughs> really, really young, aren't you? Forgot. It's cute. Forgot. Uh, you know, by the way, I forgot to mention during uh, Scope Talk. Uh, Bert Kreischer is doing great scopes. You oh, gotta yeah? follow him. I yeah. gotta follow him. He had a thing the other night at his house where he was looking for a red solo cup <laughs> while he was bitching about, you know, his life and his career and his weight and but and his hair and just like it was so raw <laughs> and real. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, man, I really like Bert. I gotta get in touch with him. Just. Make sure he's okay. And he's like, where's the red solo cup, honey? I'm just going to get a red solo cup. But I really just want to stop drinking and just exercise. Where's the red solo cups? <laughs> and she's like, in the back of the garage. By the way, uh, I always think in the back of the garage is behind the garage instead of in the back wall. Which yeah. is, I know what people mean, but when people say in the back of the garage, I think that's where you stuff stuff. In between the garage and the fence. Right. Which was always a storing area. Yeah, because some people had a yeah, an outer garage. Yeah. It was not attached to the home. <sighs> attached garage is gross to me. It is kind of gross. Like yeah. your car is in your house then. <laughs> <It's> disgusting. <laughs> your car's in the house. Convenient though, isn't mm -hmm. it? Too convenient, dude. You only get outside once in your life. I wouldn't yeah. know I just have an apartment. <laughs> I just I, I just think about it. It's very hedonistic. You keep a boat in your apartment. Well, I mean, like a canoe. <laughs> yeah, but it's a nice canoe. <laughs> a canoe is a boat, dude. Yeah. You yeah, okay. can't get around that. Okay, all right. You know what? Look, I'll say this. Every boat ain't a canoe, but every canoe is a boat. He's got a point. Got a boat. Point. Makes sense. He makes great points. He, he makes, makes great, great points. points. Boy, Chris, you were really off on that one. Mm -hmm. oh, it'll be better next time. Um, have we seen the physical new ben Bennington uh, t-shirts? No, they 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 actually get a box of them next week. <sighs> Exciting! I can't wait. I'm really they're going to look about like this logo. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah, and they'll be at the Bennington Family Thanksgiving happening November 18th at 7 p.m. at the Hard Rock Cafe. Email BenningtonGigs at gmail.com for a chance 
to get tickets. Yeah, I don't know why you're pushing something that is like so beyond sold out. It's ridiculous. Well, all right, and was with like within half an hour of you bringing it up. Yeah, uh, the other day. Oh, so Chris was sending out crazy shit three o'clock in the morning, where he was like, <laughs> "Oh my God, Louis C.K. got punched in the <laughs> face," and I'm going, "Did that?" I'm writing back to Chris. Did that even hit him? And so what was, it's a Louis C.K. impersonator, a.k.a. one of Dan's friends. <laughs> yeah, it was at a, a Canadian, um, it was at a Canadian comedy club. And then a Canadian comic had tweeted this, this, this link out of Louis C.K. got punched in the face. And I saw it, I was watching it on my phone. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> I first. gotta get this out of everybody. Everybody's gotta see this. And I was like freaking out, looking up the comic, looking up to try to see if anyone else is tweeting or. or... So he was just trying to go viral with a fake video. Exactly, yeah. And um, yeah, it was it was it was all a ruse that I was I fell for. A but, clever ruse, though. But at three in the morning, I was and you know a little high on the perks. I was like, this is crazy. I can't believe what I'm watching. Yeah, I just went to full freak out panic mode trying to get this get get, get everyone else to fucking see this thing. You're yeah, rude, you were dude. going nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. It was Total a lot of, rude. lot of emails very late night when I should have been asleep. I know we all should have been asleep and we were all awake. That was the weird thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, why, I was actually thinking to myself, why is everyone awake right now? He texted me at 8 p.m. saying stay up till 3. I'm going to send something good. I'm like, you can just send it now. You're right. He is a dick. I was texting Dan at 3 in the clear. morning. I was like, are you up, dude? Are you up? You got to see this. Joe, Dan's not texting me back. <laughs> Where is he? He wouldn't be asleep, would he? Probably. Ev everyone's to be on call. It's sad right now. Everything that we're talking about is horrifically sad. <laughs> um, I don't know whether you got the... Uh, the Scope Bros, you got to start and read your Scope Bros off during the show one day. I'll give you a segment where you can just read off Scope Bros. All right, I'll throw out some Scope Bro love. Yeah. Because they deserve it. They're the Scope Bros. They share. They hit that share broadcast button. That's so sad that you even worry about such things. So they weren't making a TV show. It was just a fake Louie. Yeah, it was it was a fake because uh, there are also some um, Instagram pictures. Yeah, that went up like of the guy, the, guy, the comic who would release the video, put that up too, and the and the Instagram video pictures were very weird and grainy. Look nothing like Louis Looks too. Nothing. First of all, you can tell by his profile in a second. That's not Louis' nose, forehead. It doesn't look anything like him. No, it looks like some guy who teaches cinema studies at an all-women's college <laughs> in New Hampshire. But the well, other I thing, took his course. Yeah, he's great. So good. Had sex with me. Whoa. Uh, and That's then, how I passed. Because <laughs> I wasn't showing up for class. Um, but even when he was on stage, I'm like, I think Louis boxed a little bit in his life. He would have made some kind of stance. You know? Yeah, I mean, I I was just I was just going nuts at night. I mean, I I got very caught up in the moment. Um. All right, let's get into uh the bit that Gail's protege, Young Cashmere, has done, and you helped him with this, uh, Dan, and you helped him with this, Joe. You guys got an opening. We did. All? Yep, we had what, an opening. You take it from here on the introduction side, because I'm not sure what's happening. All right, let's hit the opening. That's not an Beautiful. introduction. That's the worst. <laughs> okay, Cashmere and I and Dan, we put together... This is gay. <laughs> it will be very yeah, soon this because... Is a, this is a gay bit. 12 comedians <laughs> with real style. With real style. So these are the <laughs> most stylish comedians out there. And we rank them, put them together, and I think you guys really might like this. God, you're <laughs> awful. These comedians live life in the fab lane. They're fashion forward and ready for the runway. Some people are just funny, and some people are funny and fashionable. We rank the comedians with the best style. This is Comedians with Style. With me, Kashmir. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> All right, let me just say this. Two things. Number one, that opening was as good as anything they do on cable TV. It's incredible. I mean, I've actually seen shows that are that dumb. <laughs> and two, love the Kashmir. Love Kashmir. Love the catchphrase. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> 
<laughs> you do that in your regular life or every day I wake up. Yeah. You just... it's, it's in the morning. Yeah. Hello, now, hello world. Help me with this. With why do gay people care about style so much? I think me well for me it's for social media because if I look good I'll want to post online. Right. Get some validation, get some likes, a little uh, retweets and stuff like that of an outfit and it's all good. But you but you care about other people's style as well. Like for some reason gay men care how straight women dress. Yeah, it's a it's kind of like a it's a modern art piece. It's like a, it's like, we lost nice. a Monet Thanks. and we got yeah nice. we lost a Monet and we got a Chanel. Oh, okay. we got a Mo Kmart. Uh, Monet is a, was a great little singer though, wasn't she? Everybody liked her. <laughs> All right, now where would you uh, you know we were talking about Louis C.K. What do you think of his style? Black T-shirt, baggy jeans, baggy dad jeans. Not so much a style, really. More as just like a choice. Mm. How, how would you describe that? I'd say it was kind of like a, a dad ten minutes late to parent teachers night. Something like that. Maybe. I don't know why this is in a, a scope show. You know what I mean? This definitely seems like comedians with real style should be a. Uh... All right, well, let's uh, go through some of this. He's also dressed so, so stylish to present this The guy show. is always, seriously, he always looks like he's ready to go, you know? And he's casual and chic. He puts Sh the cash in cashmere. <laughs> Oh, and casual. I, I like that. No, seriously, <laughs> as dumb as that is, I like it. All right, let's see what we All got right. here. Yeah, so we're starting with Russell Brand. Really? It's style? Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those things. If like you see someone who may be like, homeless on the street or something, and you're like, um, like my place or mine, but they're kind uh -huh. of like, into it, and you're like, right. it kind of just goes with that. You, you know he hasn't showered. Yeah. You know he doesn't own a comb. You know he probably has like herpes, but he just pulls it off so well. Women, like, lo women yeah. love him. I did the MS with him and saw him flirting with a nun, and I'm not even making that up. It's a true story. And then after the nun said, "Can I get a copy when you guys were talking about me?" Because um, <laughs> I brought up doing it. I go, "I saw you flirting with a nun." So it worked. Yeah, essentially, and it then, worked. Here's something else that he does. He slightly kicks women's feet while he talks to them. <laughs> And by this. well, it's like a, it's like a seventh grade flirt. It's like yeah. you know, like I used to think if you like a girl, put her in a headlock. Sure. And then you know later, yeah, uh, doing you know, it. Yeah, yeah. It was I was called an abuser, but um, he's like into negging and peacocking, just like the that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, wait, I don't know the neg thing. That's uh, it was that guy who came up with all the ways to. Oh, the 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 style guy. Yeah, but he's like, like guy. no, yeah. he's sure the guy who yelping. who basically told everyone, here's how you get women, oh. and it was like the tricks of getting women. Oh, you neg the, them, yeah. but then also peacock, and he's a total peacock. Okay, Russell Brand is a peacock, but he also is. Uh, Kind of trash can formal, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, that, yeah. Like a little piece from here, a little piece from there. A little derelict. Yeah, he's a <laughs> derelict in it up a little bit. But you're crazy about him. I yeah, I, I don't know. And like it's one of those things. It's kind of like how I watch. I don't want. I don't want to watch the Kardashians. I don't want to think he looks good. But you can't fight it. It's just yeah. Uh, is that the, is that a straight man that gay men would be with in a heartbeat? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it would. The only hesitation is about hurting our girl Katy Perry. But, oh, you guys love Katy Perry. Yeah, I know it's very yeah. It's kind yeah. It's kind of like and a boy, he confederate really did destroy and a her too. He did. I uh, saw her a documentary that she did. And she was just like flying all over to be with him, and she's got this huge staff with her. I mean, he's doing stand up gigs. <laughs> right. He could have been there yeah. easy. He's just not showered. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he just. I mean, that's that's a common thing. I love you. You don't give a fuck that you're married to the number one pop star in the world. I know, and she came out of that breakup looking like a rose. She came out, everyone was like, oh, Katie, you deserve... But you know what, he didn't come out of a bed. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, women were still crazy about him. That's true. He, he never really said what his beef was with her, or... I remember once he went on a, he went on a show and said um, that, you know, that feeling of just when you're having sex with... Your partner, and you just wish it was anyone else. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, I heard that he he was too freak nasty for her. She wasn't freak nasty enough. Okay, that's what I heard. Well, that could be a problem. You know, and you got the yeah. same level of freak nastiness. And I think his style shows he's a freak. You know what I mean? Well, here's the thing about him: he's really funny, 
And he's also like a brilliant guy. Like he's really Yeah, he's smart. He's a deep thinker, you know what I mean? And he he's ready even to have his opinions change when he hears something new that he agrees with. He's also very fast too. Yeah, he's quick. Um he's just he's terrific. Uh but number twelve. (laughs) Number twelve. For some reason he can walk on the cash walk. Okay. Oh, Cashwalk, yeah. I don't want to ever judge before we're done, but Cashmere's killing this. He's segment. doing really well. Why are you 12? I don't want to say this, too, but and I don't know whether it's a lie, but the other day, a gay icon was supposedly staring at him in the building. We shouldn't say who it is. Yeah. But the no, only no person who saw this take place is Jamban, our other intern. Yes, and but, he reported someone was making eyes. Yeah. And I want to believe it. I want to. Believe I want it. to believe it. Yeah. And it was a gay icon, a a life changer for like somebody it. like yourself. A lifestyle life changer. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, to so we're 11. moving on to uh, Dave Hill. Love this yeah. one. I would put him higher. Really? Ooh. I would put him higher. What's the whole Dave Hill look about? Sex. Pure sex. Really? Yes. I see, because I'm the 180. I think he's like a little adorkable. Like, you could put him with like Zoe Deschanel and they like drink like cold brew coffee together. And that's cute. I'm like, that's his style. It's a good style. Like, I would drink off. cold brew coffee with her. Yeah. Why, why, not? why not? Yeah. I like hot brew coffee. He's got, he's okay. got also a very, everything he owns is like vintage jacket. It's like a throwback look. And that's cool. Yeah, and he's got rock star hair too. It's a because, it, but I feel like because like his hair is not combed, and r- so it's kind of like a Russell brand. But I feel like he doesn't know he didn't comb it, or he tried to comb it, and just like <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> really missed a few strands. <laughs> and it kind of works with his like little uh, with his little uh, throwback style. But now is he uh, is he somebody that the ladies love? I, I think uh, the ladies can't deny the is, sex appeal of Dave Hill. Is that right? Yeah. Right. And I feel like he could kind of, because uh, I like to give back to everyone out there. So, if, uh, like a Dimitri Martin, I think he could kind of learn from Dave Hill. Ooh, I would agree. Work with a little, him. work a little adorkable, like funny, little silly into his style, because he kind of just does like a blue je- like a blue shirt, blue jeans, and just goes up. And he has like the smartness to pull that off. So I think if they could uh, go shopping together. All right, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm learning so much during this. I hope that you are writing some stuff down too, Dan. Yeah, I'm typing it all. Because can I tell you why? That t-shirt that you're wearing looks like the flag at the end of the war, right? It's just so... Tattered. And your neck is over... It's just gigantic. Can like I, somebody was yanking at your shirt. Can I say something? I had a sweater on today, but then Cashmere told me it looked like a Cosby sweater. Oh, so okay. I took it off. Good. It was, yeah. Good. You're following his lead. All right, let's go to number 10. All right, so now we're going to... uh yeah, you can leave. Oh, I agree with this one 100%. Always looks great. When right. he came in and did the Benton yeah. show, I was just stunned what a stylish guy he is. Well, he's, A, he's got the body for it. He you does. know what I mean? He's, uh, he's got like the perfect body. Also, this is always very helpful when you wear a hat well. Yes. He's a good hat wearer. My only thing with the hat is I'm not crazy about a fedora. I'm not crazy about that. Too so played? I, yeah. You know, I feel like, but he does have a great head for a different type of hat. What? Maybe you could maybe you could try like a little top hat, like a little uh, like a little beret. Yeah, hat. what? But like a cool, he could pull it off. Cause now here's he the could thing. Pull it off. Uh, I know the fedora thing ruined because of hipsters, but I don't think that affects the black community, which has had a long and healthy relationship with the fedora. And, and the Latins, I would say as well. I agree. They wear a fedora. By the way, I never well. even got mad at hipsters for wearing fedoras. That just came. No. Uh, you, you know, it's just so funny that. In this country, up until 45 years ago, every man would have a hat every time he left the house. Yeah. Hatcha. I mean, Fedora's not my favorite of the brimmed hats. I'll right. give you that. I prefer a uh, bowler. Uh, you, know I'm a, you know I'm a bowler girl. <laughs> well, you know yeah, what I you mean? are. You Big are time bowler. bowler girl. Yeah. And I also um, think with him, uh, if anyone wears glasses, they should learn how to wear some glasses from him. He can put on, he can make a four eyes like look amazing. Okay. He, he, right? Those horn right. rim glasses he's wearing. Yeah. Very sexy. It's a very sexy I, look. Just, now, no. do you believe in people wearing glasses when they don't need to? I mean, I kind of have like flirted with the idea of doing that, so I'm you all should. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I kind of feel like I'm like, oh, I'll just wear a fun sweater and put on glasses. I'll be so, yeah, now, I'll have a Chris, whole story. Now that you're a, a well-known scope person, Sup, scope, is bro. this help it, helpful to you? 
Now, see, I thought, like, now that I've gone to this uh, buttered and collared shirt phase, I think I'm looking a lot better than I used it's to. It's not buttered collared shirts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Buttoned collared shirts. <laughs> That's it. Here's the thing that uh, I, I can say for Chris, and really all of us, right? We started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Started from the, the bottom, bottom not the whole team here. All right, let's go on to number nine. DL Ugly, my only problem with this, mm-hmm. I would make it higher. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. not by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic that two and Master are already in this list. Yes, ah. huge. All right, who we got yeah, for number so nine? So now number nine is Jen Kirkman. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I kind of think if you uh follow her like on social media, she's like perfect for like a rebellious style but you still want to look good for like posting a selfie or something like that. She like is a great little uh She fancies yeah. herself a rocker. Yeah. She does. No, no, so There's like, a leather pant there. The shirt reads same chic different day. And by the way, I'm always a fan of any woman in a jacket. It's a good look. Yeah, it is a good look. And she always does um like she'll uh, look at Vogue and fashion magazines and see what they're doing, and then post a picture of her doing that six months ago. So she has an eye. Oh! Yeah, she has. She's so raven, yeah. I like that. that. Chris, you got to start doing that with other scopers. All right, I'll fucking take them all down. Because I know there's certain (laughs) interns uh, that are, you know. Intern Alex? Coming for you, Alex. A younger, better-looking, more energetic Chris Stanley. The energy I bring to scopes. All right. Can't be beat. Okay. And you know who I think could uh, learn a little bit from Jen Kirkman is Natasha Leggero. Because I like... I'm not commenting on that. I can't, <laughs> I can't be around that. <laughs> this is getting catty. <laughs> 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 Everything that I think they, that is wrong with gays is they just are so hard on women. So go ahead. What were you saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. She got a... Like, Natasha will go out with like a boa, a headband, a bracelet, like a fake cigarette, like and all this stuff. And looks cool. She looks so cool, but it's a lot all at once. So I okay. think that she kinda is a little more subdued. Down. So you think she could use the uh spin around in the mirror the first thing you mm-hmm. see, you throw off? Yeah. That's a well, good trick. You know, and I try to teach this to Dan in his writing style when I call it hat on a hat, which yeah. I got from somebody at SNL, I can't remember who. Um well, maybe Seth Myers came up with it and somebody might, was might have been a hater. But yeah, a hater probably said it, but the point is that when you're adding levels to your yeah. writing, it's destroying it and wait, why are you wearing a sweater <laughs> tied around your shoulders right now? I, th- I was trying to take tips from people on the list. Oh my god. Dude, that that looks like the first George Bush. <laughs> we'll do that. That's something you can do in Maine and nowhere else. Well, what what do you think, Kashmir? Um, I mean, like, I would, like, buy, like, maple syrup from on a street. Oh, like, shit, uh, I like, love the Northeast, that. but, like, besides that. that, a little, yeah. Dude, you should be on one of these fucking shows. You're so good at this. You can't do preppy sweater around the shoulders and then Travis Bickle head. <laughs> That's true. And you know he's wearing his pink sneakers, too. Yeah. He's not all the... Orange. Same thing. Pink orange. All right, let's go to eight. All right, so now we're going this, down... By the way, all these are up on the eye bank. Yeah, so now we're at James Corden. Yeah. A little uh, 007 XL for me, I think. Because he looks, he like is, what I think about him is he could be the best date for a wedding and looks like the best time at a wedding. Because he'll go in all posed and then be able to dance a lot. See, before we got James Corden, he was a big star in England. Yes. And here in America, people are like, oh yeah, he's that fat guy on TV. He was five times fatter over in England. I mean, he was gigantic. Metric system. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, metric system is what did it. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you think he's very well dressed? I think so. And I know uh, Joe List, who was in here a few weeks ago, has yeah. a wedding coming up. Yeah. Take some notes from James Corden. Okay. Take Great. Little, yeah, oh. Oh. Yeah. He's rocking that three piece suit. Yeah, too, that three. And he has a... fun, too. Yeah. Because like, if you were in a yeah. suit, you could be a little boring, but he has fun with it. He's James Corden. Little yeah. pops of color here and there. You know what? <laughs> Splash. The, uh, you know, he wears his coat inside out like it's a funny joke. <laughs> uh, but he's taken American by storm, right? People he is. love him. He's yeah. beloved. And they they love his viral videos where he's singing. He's a good singer. <laughs> I would say America's being charmed by him. Mm. James mm. Charming. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Seriously, that got stupid okay. very quick. You're right. You know, for, for a couple seconds. A hat on a hat. It was a hat on a hat. A hat on a hat. All right, seven. So now we're going down to Steve Martin. 
Okay. Great. Who I think has looked almost the same with every decade he's been in, but as good every decade. Well, see, again, he's got a perfect body for suits, and he's he's he has the walk of a dancer. Yeah. And uh, one day, he walked down my block. This is uh, fucking interesting. And I'm like, what the fuck is Steve Martin doing on this block? And he was walking to his own premiere in a, in a movie thing and just came walking from his He has a place on the Upper East Side. But I never saw anyone walk up to their own movie <laughs> premiere. Here I am. And it was for Shop Girl. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. You know um, what I think also yeah. he has going for him with the style? Again, he's always rocks glasses in a great way. Yeah. But I think it's that hair. The I hair, think yeah. the yeah. sexy, distinguished, white, white hair that he has had my entire life. Uh, before your entire life. I mean, yeah. he, he had white hair probably when he was in his late 20s. Yeah. Um, and because, look, that per- like a purple on him looks good. Like, it just, because it doesn't take away from anything he's wearing and he gets to play with it a little, little bit. Now, he's a guy who follows the art scene. So maybe he understands visuals more than most men. Because most guys think, put it on a Vikings jersey, looking pretty yeah. good. Looking pretty good. And I got purple <laughs> fucking sneakers on. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. right there. My purple. Well, I, th- I was thinking he should be writing like style guides. I know he probably would never do it because he is uh, a little too busy being himself. But I think if he ever wants to publish like a Steve style, I'd buy it. Is that right? Steve, Steve yeah. Style. You heard Steve it here Style. first. Yeah. Steve Style. So did he. He yeah. just heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Am I doing that? <laughs> I guess it's happening. I wish that he um, really would go back to young excuse me, no matter what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was stylish. Yeah. All right, people are loving this, and 007XL seems to have caught on with people. Very much. Gordon's viral. Uh, all right, let's all right, go. So we're going to another late yeah. night guy now, Trevor Noah. <sighs> Crazy stylish. Crazy. Yeah. And just like his, and you could see it all in the premiere, like the advertisement for his new show. They just literally showed him in a suit and his ass. And you're just like, all right, we're watching it. Like, yeah. The deal on him is he has that mid 60s rat pack look. You yeah. Know? It's a lucky fucking gift from God when you're given that. He is uh, distractingly attractive, I would yeah, say. Like, that, that, hurts in comedy. Yeah. that hurts in comedy. Dan, you want to jump in on this? I want to say, I think James Corden is more stylish, but Trevor Noah is just way more handsome, so that's why so he's handsome. higher here. But Trevor you think Noah, he's incredibly handsome? Yeah, he's I'd like great. to, as Dan put it once, he was born to smile on TV. Yeah, because really the good. dimples work. Yeah. The dimples work. And sometimes he just smiles, and that, that's the whole band. And he yeah. still has a baby face. And then I forget to continue to listen to what he's yeah. saying. Something happening in the Middle like, East. Me and Trevor Noah. Content and Couture. And <laughs> also, there's a kindness to him. He helped me put away my airplane tray. So, <laughs> oh, that is so yeah, cool. really was why I was putting away my airplane tray. Just Oh, I see you're having trouble with that, and he just... Put it in, and I go like this. Thank you, Trevor Noah. God damn it, Trevor Noah. Yeah. I feel like he will make a little change for everyone in their 20s now, because they will start seeing him like, oh, he's cool, and he looks cool in dress as well. So You know what's great about him, too? Uh, you started from the bottom, now you're here. here. You started from, from the bottom, now the whole team here. here. Yeah. Drake is the biggest star in the world. He's huge. Drizzy. But I actually <laughs> prefer the cell phone song. Yeah. Even though I hate it. Really? <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> and I was laying in bed the other night going like this. And he's like, come me on my cell phone. phone. I'm like, why am I doing that? I thought I hated it. And then I just you went don't. over and started playing on YouTube again. <laughs> why would you play a song saw- you hate on YouTube? <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> All right. So why do you have Trevor Noah so low? I mean, it, it's hard for me to believe anyone can beat him. Yeah, he seems like top you five material to me. I mean, it's one of those things. He's, I think he's grown into himself, and I want to see him continue his style okay. for a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, let me just ask one more thing. Mm-hmm. Is he dressing himself I, or somebody else? Because I that was my fear. That was my yeah. fear. Oh, but that's I a fear. Saw, I know. It's... Woke up, woke up with a night sweat. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Trevor. So, uh, but I looked and I saw some stuff before his Daily Show time, and he was killing it. Yeah. yeah. Again, Loving the journey for him. Yeah. Again, the blessing of having the right body for clothes. I haven't been yeah. listening to anything you guys have been saying because I've been staring at that picture of him this entire time. Well, he's promoting his own ankles. Is he looking at me right yeah. now? But uh, you Is know, Dan, happened? from a comedy point of view, is it? It, th- does it hurt to be attractive? 
I don't. Uh, I don't think so. First of all, yeah, so some some people it makes angry. So yeah, because they're like, yeah. this is supposed to be for outsiders. I, you know, people like, look. I think Anthony Jeselnik. People are tougher on him because he looks attractive. Yeah, exactly. And he looks, he looks like a bully who was mean to you in high school. <laughs> right. You're like, I don't want to support this guy. Yeah, He's been mean to me. How do you deal with it, Dan? Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should only hear those jokes in the basement of Gotham. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, at least. No. The- <laughs> Rose, Rose battle. No. Haven't you ever gotten out of there yet? Uh, yeah, I did the upstairs once. <laughs> Why do you only work one club? <laughs> I've done Eastville before. Dan, Dan is out every night. I know. You're partying with your fucking friends. I know. Let's Maybe. go to number five. This right. is not about this fucking it's not about idiot's him. lack so of we're ambitions. we're going on to Bridget Everett. And Love. All I gotta say, it's her world and we're living in it. I agree. And I lo- like, oh, everything she does, like, the Chardonnay, her statement necklace, it's just beautiful. Uh, beautifully executed. It's just, yeah. She She's also brought back somewhat of a rock uh, way of looking. She Cabaret. Has- way looking it's one of the few things that makes new york hip at all is bridget everett i was fascinated when she came in here and told us that she has a costume designer and thinking about her upcoming shows and then they design things so there could be accidental nudity (laughs) on purpose well first make it nice and loose so a titty can pop out at any moment's time (laughs) Well, remember how like she wasn't performing that day so she came in in a tank top and some i would say 1970s gym shorts <laughs> and uh, there was accidental nudity yeah. i i think it literally is an accident with her yeah. that those things swing out yeah. uh, and sometimes try to run away but i'm glad to see her making the list if, yes, if she's one of the too. only people i feel like that makes it like a performance oh no i agree what, yeah she it's just yeah it's gorgeous yeah. i agree she's uh, amazing and you know the career keeps hitting bigger all the time i was happy to hear david tell say what a big fan that he was and you would think somebody who does like the pure stand-up that he does would be turned off by somebody who brings in other elements sure you know because a lot of comics get that way and he's like no she's amazing all right so that that was shocker and and uh i dig it yeah i gotta say this list is incredible pretty good but the way he's delivering it it's fucking Bravo TV. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's it is. Bravo TV. You're better than those ass wipes that they have on television. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to number four. All right, so now we're going on to Eddie Murphy. Really? And this is a just, sweater. Whoa. Mm, For only three words. Yeah. Red leather suit. It was just like... I yeah. would have thought that would have been a faux pas. It, I mean, maybe if it was done, it was just... You see, you see him go out on the stage with like the confidence and it fitting perfect and it just... Oh, right. It's a bold choice. It's bold. Uh, but I don't know. There's no shoes in the world that go with that. None. <laughs> uh, if you see anyone in leather pants, their shoes always look awkward yeah. to me. You know, you try to wear a boots with it, and it always looks dumb. But it's just, I don't know. I feel like because this, you can't even look at the shoes. Because you're just like, this guy's out here. Red leather, just like captivating everything. And okay. it just, yeah. The, the phrase mm. red leather. Yes, of course. That's, That's going to just... intrigue you. <laughs> But can we just talk about the fit? Look at the cuff of the pants. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm not sure. He's going to Mars later. <laughs> a little astronaut. I think the what only was shoe. Mar- <laughs> what was his Martin uh, Martian fucking thing that he did with Jay Moore? <laughs> Pluto Nash. Yeah, thanks. The only uh, the only shoe, the only footwear that could go with it, moon boot. I'm <laughs> I like that. Only mm. moon boot. I like that idea. We've really turned into a caddy thing now. <laughs> but I've never seen <laughs> a fashion. Oh, yeah. First of all, I've never never seen a fashion show talk about a 30 year old outfit <laughs> as it was now here's my big problem with it one night he would wear red leather next night yellow leather try saying that back and forth it's not easy go ahead go with it red leather yellow leather red yellow yeah, yeah. Eddie. 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 why are you doing this to me Eddie, Eddie. i put you oh, on I the know. list yeah. I, I know why you like him because he was the first star to pick up a transgendered hitchhiker <laughs> back in the 80s when you couldn't get away with that no. shit. He crossed you know? boundaries. Yeah, yeah he did. Um, never cop to it to this day, though. All right, that one shocked This is the first real shocker for yeah, me. I Eddie agree. Murphy. 
particularly the amount of it's, anti-gay material in this You got special. it. I know, but you just got to... <laughs> because you knew we wouldn't listen. We're just looking at the suit. I tried I was, to Google. I, yeah, I tried to Google. Oh, guys can wear jumpsuits now? Cool. And I no results. All right. Hold on. Uh, I'm picking up some of this right now. Boris says this on Twitter. Cashmere could become the new spade. Hope Lauren is listening. That's a, quite a... A compliment. That is a huge compliment. Uh, and, and it's not anti-black. He's talking about David Spade. <laughs> Ezra says, cashmere is what I hoped Fez would become. Brian says, totes agree that Mr. Dave Hill is one of the most stylish comedians out there. Great job, uh, cashmere. Totes. Uh, I agree. Uh, Kyle uh, Firestein cannot wait until you bring up Jeffrey Gurian. So let's keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he made the list. All right, so now we are going to number three, a Paul F. Tompkins. Wow. Wow. I would have thought Paul F. Tompkins would have hit number one. Now I'm <laughs> shocked. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this. Paul F. Tompkins is my number one. Yeah, me too. Um, Because I could watch his stand-up on mute because I'm like, how does he pull it off? Yes. It's just, it's everything that you think would be, because you're like, oh, a mustache, a bow tie, but then you put it on him and it's just fat well, the, the, yeah. the mustache alone. The mustache, yeah. But, you know, the bow tie is really a, a hard thing to pull off without looking cartoonish or clownish. I feel like here's something that's important with the bow tie your own build is essential. Too mm. big. Very silly. Too skinny. Ridiculous. <laughs> Too big to skinny, bow. Skinny man in a bow tie? You've got to be a perfect middleweight for that. First of all, you and Cashmere should be doing a show together. I'm having a blast, by the way. I'm having a hoot. Tonight's episode's about bow ties. Are you too big to bow? <laughs> too big to bow. <laughs> too big. I don't know. We do, we're t- <laughs> too, too big. <laughs> so, so, too big to bow was the story I was writing about John Candy. And uh, it was a book I was hoping to have made into a musical. But... Um, I, I'm seeing a chemistry with you two. There's got to be some kind of a weird comedy style show. Here. He can't wear a bow tie. He's a pencil man. <laughs> Falls on him. All right. Eddie! Eddie! <laughs> you betrayed me, and I put you in four. Uh, all right, here's number two. All right, now we're going to Whitney Cummings, who I think it was... I think she's so stylish, it's hard to put her a little bit on the comedian side, because everyone rips her apart about that. But she she spends hours to look good. I see on her Snapchat, she has huge closets full of shoes, and she tries her best. Girl's got to get up to Now, jail. she's Aaron Rodgers. Uh, is that the one that dates? That's Olivia Munn. I get those two confused. You do. All right, so Munn and Cum rhymes. Uh, Whitney Cummings did our show, right? Yeah, she did, yeah. Now, here's the thing about Whitney Cummings. Again, wasn't expecting it. Really smart, really deep, yeah. really brilliant person. Also, beautiful enough that you would think that that you are surprised that she does stand up. Uh, and I think she's funny. Yeah, I mean, she. it's almost to me a cheat because she's so attractive. It's like... It's almost the Trevor Noah idea. Like, mm. everything's going to look good on her. Look at her face, her oh, hair, her body. She, yeah. Cheat for her to be on a... On the list, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, she yeah. should be compared with real movie stars and not, uh, um, you know, comedians. And it's one of those things she will post, like, that uh, she she's, like, waking up to examine and putting one of those, like, uh, face blasters on her to get all the skin and, like, not, <laughs> like, having a team of five zip her onto shirts and stuff like that. How many dresses. Twitters and Instagrams are you following? I Is follow it? a lot. Yeah. I just yeah. don't have a lot of free time. I'm preoccupied. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be in this the this is his life. <laughs> yeah. Right. I understand. All right. We are coming to number one. Now, I can honestly tell you, I have no idea who this is going to be. I'm shocked because number three would have been my number one. Paul of Tompkins would have been mine. Oh, uh, he was. I mean, I've actually told him to his face. Yes. This you, is stunning. In real life. Uh, and by the way, he's the only, he's the best dressed guy they could easily just make a living as a voiceover artist. Yes. You know what I mean? He's got a great enough voice. His voice has is well dressed. Yes. <laughs> he cares about voice style. <laughs> All right. So. I don't know who it's gonna be. I'm so excited. I, I'm nervous. All right, so we're doing number one yeah. is the one and only Eddie Izzard. Oh, oh right, right. Wow. Best of both. Worlds. Best of ever. yeah. Beat Whitney, beat Paul, could wear what they're wearing and look better in it. And it's just yeah. 
You also see a lot of times he'll just bum around in a black t-shirt too, though. Yes, you and know? look good doing it. He looks good in a suit, and he also looks good in an evening gown. Now, the, um, this picture that you have up is incredible to me. Like, he looks so phenomenal in the suit. He's rocking the eyeliner, and then those nails. Right? It's just, His yeah. nail game is on point. Uh, on point. And you know, when he did the unmask, by the way, I'm very proud. Again, more unmask people here. But everything was dressed down for radio. Yes. But the nails yes. were the famous nails. Just, yeah. If you're not wearing nails, you're not doing drag. <laughs> was, Season which, two. It's Alaska. Was that? Alaska Thunderfuck. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite drag queen. Well, I know that because we were in the lobby and... She came out of the elevator, and Gail's these... I was like, oh, <laughs> and oh She God. turned around and grabbed me and went, it's Alaska. <laughs> and I go, I don't know what you're telling me. <laughs> she walked off the elevator, and I could hear myself back going, Alaska. Like, just to her face. Alaska. And it's just, yeah, he, like, it's one of those things, so, you know, people say, like, dance like nobody's watching. He dresses like everyone's watching, oh. doesn't give a shit, and looks amazing. Yeah. And we just gotta, you, everyone just gives props to him. Well, I would say this for him, too, because of the cross-dressing thing, that you, you try to point out to people that if you're confident with yourself, the world will accept you. Yes. And you would think... That all people would talk about is the fact that he wore a gown on stage, and it rarely even comes up. Yeah, because he makes it seem like a normal, yeah, okay. Th he makes it seem expected. You know, he had that know. one special where he was wearing that like Chinese like inspired yeah. dress. So good, man. And then you're you we you look at it for like a second and thirty seconds into his set you're not even You're paying attention yeah. to his yeah. material. Yeah. You know? It's we I mean it's crazy that he could pull that off without making it parody. Yeah. The, the fact that people never talk about it is gigantic. That's confidence. Yeah. It's confidence that does that. Uh and then Chris uh Chris Stanley wears as he calls it a buttered shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep bringing it up all the time because you're nervous about it. Well, yeah, I'm just not used to wearing, you know, these like uh, proper shirts. You know, I'm a T-shirt guy. <laughs> it's a real proper shirt he's wearing. Then. Um, here's uh, Rick. Rick in California. Good list all the way up to Whitney. And then I'm sitting here flabbergasted that Steve Harvey's not on that list. Steve mm. Harvey. Uh, well, he does wear those white shoes to match his teeth. Um, by the way, Steve Harvey taking a lot of heat now from families who say that they, he's over-sexualized Family Feud. Really? Yeah. Too much of the uh, ham flour? Yeah, like, there was a question that they brought up. Like, like, where's the first person you touch on a woman to make her feel, you know, seduced or something? This isn't family hour. Yeah. <laughs> And the, and the person actually said this, the, the bottom of her vagina. <laughs> Is that the number what one? bottom? <laughs> Wait, what part's the bottom? As an owner of a vagina, I am confused. What was the answer? Got me, Steve. <laughs> was that right? Yes. Oh, yes, right. the bottom. Oh, by the way, this isn't sex ed, you little fucking... <laughs> <laughs> oh. What are you writing down? I, I First of all, I agreed with you on the Paul Tompkins, but I have... Uh, no problem with this. I also yeah, think I'm it, shocked that he... I thought it was very interesting that you went, you know, that there were males and females. You didn't split up the right? genders. It's a, yeah. yeah. 2015, I was guys. hoping Caitlyn Jenner was going to be number one because that would just infuriate everybody. <laughs> now, I was at first going to say that I was upset somebody didn't make a showing, but I realized that you used all current comedians mm -hmm. and Eddie not Murphy? comedian comedians past. Why, who do we have? Because I was going to say, how can you not have Joan Rivers oh, she, on this list? But these are all current. Yeah, she would have been her own list, just 12 great outfits. She, uh, I feel like they, all these people can dress up like this yeah. and do comedy because of her, too. You she love just, her? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Dude, I feel so sorry that you missed it when she was, like, you know, a regular with us for a while. It was the best times ever. Yeah, the she, best times ever. And those the unmasks with her are incredible. Oh, yeah. It's just great. But even her just stopping by the show, she was just, she would have loved this list probably. I wish she would have done this list with you. I'm sure she would have ripped into half yeah. of, your, <laughs> of your picks. Um, 
I, I would have thought Eddie Murphy was a, a comedian of the world's past. Yes. Uh, Chris, anybody you would have put on there that isn't? I would put Paul Feig on there. Paul Feig, no more for his directing now, but right. yes. Yeah. Incredibly good direct. I would say this about Paul Feig, the old thing. Dress English, think Yiddish. Uh, yeah, he's an incredibly well-dressed yes, man. Yes, very, very oh, yeah. good style. And he dresses like that on the set. Yes. Really? A, yeah. Yeah, because I mainly know him as a director. Yeah. Well, I he, yeah. he invited me up to the Ghostbusters set this year. Chris has made sure the thing is put in a vault inside a nice block and put away. By the way, he's done interviews since then, bringing up some of the same things, and they're out there. Ours is the only one that's been embargoed. But he directed it in a suit like that with a walking stick. He had a walking stick with him all day, which I'd like to see yeah. that for smoking with Chris. <laughs> mm, that's a great idea. One wing up, the other with a walking stick. <laughs> I'm going to scope. Um, Carla Finch, please, that you're very comfortable in air. Um, She's right. Uh, Rob Lee says, comedians with style seriously, even gayer without Fez. You realize who your listeners are, right? Well, Rob Lee, don't think that you're speaking for everyone. You're not. You know? And if you got any tips from it, you're welcome. In the oh, back of his yeah. eyes. Oh, yeah. whoa, I'm whoa, sure whoa, bro. looks great right now. Oh. Yeah. You know what Tip Rob Lee would like to have? Dick Tip! Dick Tip! Mm. Um, a lot of cashmere love out there. It surprised people. And I believe that a lot of people are saying that we got in the way of you and Gail. Maybe you and Gail should do a uh, style scope today. I would yeah. love it. Yeah. Nice style scope. Now, Dan... Uh, was in the other day. I thought you were going to play a bigger part of this, but you felt like your boy had it, huh? He did great. He yeah. killed it. By the way, Dan, remember the other day when you were telling me nobody was moving to L.A.? Right. You couldn't be more wrong. Even on PTI, they said at least two teams are going to be in L.A. At least two. Right. And I hope one of them is the Rams. I'll be pissed off if the Rams don't move there. I want to go back to, say, Los Angeles Rams. Wow. That's, that's what, that yeah. was the original place for, for the Rams. Never St. Louis. St. Louis was the Cardinals, obviously. Was that in the 80s when they moved or in the... Yeah, yeah. it was the 80s, yeah. probably. Um, I think that, yeah, because they were there. They and the Raiders were there at the same time, and then they both moved out. So L.A. had two teams and then no teams for like 20 plus years. Yeah. But three teams have said they wanted to, to move there. Raiders, Chargers, and the Rams. Now. This is what Dan was telling us. No teams will move to L.A., but he thinks one will move to London. Who do you got moving to London? Maybe the Rams. The London Rams. Imagine how dumb yeah. that sounds. Well, they could rename it. Like London the Ramming. He, he, would <laughs> he would never rename the Rams. It's a famous name, famous um, helmet. That would be... I, I would actually sue the NFL if someone tried to... It's the best helmet, isn't it? Yeah, it's the best. I mean, there's certain names and and... And helmets that belong there forever. And the Rams is one of them. When I was a little kid, that's why I, I liked the Rams because of the spy. I thought of it was a spiral, not even a, a, a ram horn. Really? Yeah. So Dan said nobody's moving to L.A., but now he's got uh, the London Rams. I just don't think we're ever going to get a full-time English team. I think it's too far to travel. Yeah, it seems like it would be a hard thing to pull off. And I don't think that they would welcome it as, you know. Well, only expats go to those games. Yeah. No one gives a shit. They got their own sport. You They're doing well with it. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> well, They're thriving, yeah. yeah. Somebody was telling me, like, the fan club for Manchester uh, United is like $800 million. It's two and a half times the amount of people who live in the United States have signed up for a fan club for a soccer team because this is all around the world. They're known. You know? Yeah. Where we're really, I mean... Our football store stars can leave our country and be anonymous, but David Beckham will never be anonymous again. Yes. You know? Anywhere. Anywhere on the planet. You could go to fucking Antarctica. Bex? <laughs> Bex! <laughs> you bent it like yourself. <laughs> That's what they yell to him. Chris, who are you predicting is going to be in L.A.? 
Raiders come back to L.A. and the and the uh, and the Rams. L.A. Raiders, Rams, Los Angeles, Chargers, Chargers stay in San Diego. Chargers, I feel like the L.A. Chargers sounds cool. It might sound cool, but they belong in San Diego. It's they San really, Diego, yeah. French. And I think the Raiders belong back in Los Angeles. Really? You hate the the thought of the Oakland Raiders? I like the Los Angeles Raiders better than the Oakland Raiders. I like Oakland Raiders. I think it makes perfect sense. It does. And it suits the, their whole thing. It but, works for them. But, you know, if anyone should bitch about not having a stadium, it's those fucking guys. They're still playing on a baseball field. I, I didn't realize that that was the case. I yeah. would have assumed that they, I mean, they seem like such a big football town. And they have such love. There's no money over there. They have to You both use an old stadium. And there's, I mean, you don't want to have a game where, you know, Tom Brady comes down and then twists his knee uh, running over a fucking pitcher's mouth. It's ridiculous. Are there rosin bags still out there? Did you see Brady last night? Yeah, dominating. You were mm-hmm. Dolphins that you said we're now picking up and going to run the table. I, Did- thought, I thought that new coach was going to take it. I thought he had it, a tight ends coach. <laughs> Everybody that starts as the hard ass coach, it normally fades on them. Duke and Oklahoma drills, bro. Do you fucking understand that this is a man's game? Just shut up, dude. I ain't filming, dude. We're going to get fucking crazy out of What's here. What's the big game this weekend? I know you were giving out tips on smoking with Chris. All right, Sunday night football. The big game is the undefeated Green Bay Packers in Denver against the undefeated Denver Broncos. Now, in my uh, sport betting prediction, take the Broncos at plus two and a half. Green Bay Packers are going to lose Sunday night. They're going to lose outright. They're going to lose outright. So take the Broncos a plus two and a half. I don't know whether you've watched much Aaron Rodgers, but he's a hell of a ball player. I would never bet against him. The Broncos defense is for real. For and real. For, for real. For real. For real. Farrell? Also, I said take the Vikings plus one on the road against the Bears. Hell yeah. And take the Giants on the road against the Saints at plus three. All these things seem to make sense until <laughs> they really. They, I can't imagine this not happening right now. I know, I know. It's you so fucked feel up. That way Me up. neither, Chris. <laughs> I'm on your side. You love your Vikings like a ridiculous. Oh amount. yeah, and I hate those Packers a ridiculous amount too. Why? Oh, they. Okay, so this is what happened in the Twin Cities where I grew up. There's a lot of uh, Packers fans that migrated there because we have what we like to call culture and things to do. Um, so everyone in Wisconsin. Is just a Packers fan because that's all Wisconsin really has. Is that Joe will randomly bring up to me how much he hates Aaron Rodgers when we're not even talking about it? <laughs> yeah, I'll just say it in the office. Like, hey, have I told like, you how much I hate Aaron Rodgers? Like, hey, yeah. fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's <for laughs> fucking constant. Guy can't even throw a football well. <laughs> he can though. That's the problem. <laughs> like, I get that you can hate him, but you can't attack the way he plays. You can hate him just because he lives in a different city than you, which I do. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you know other things about him. His stupid face. No, his face is fine though. Um, I don't get it though. I I don't get how that you can't even just like the fact that there is a Green Bay Packers, a city that shouldn't have a team, and they own it themselves. They'll never move. They'll never go against the community. It's the best. It's the best story in the NFL. It's a great franchise. It's the best story in sports. And you know, American sports. Aaron Rodgers' footwork is amazing. That's all I have to say about him. That is arm. That the arms. Arm's arm. not too bad either. <laughs> <laughs> so there yeah, was something else to say. I mean, if you saw how lowly the Packers well, well, I'll tell you this way: they started at the bottom, not, not a hill. hill. No. They started, started at the, the bottom, bottom, not a whole curve. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> Vikings uh, started at the bottom. Now what? All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Vikings have been to four. They, I don't think anyone was. They went to four in a row, right? Uh, we went to three in a row, and then Fran Tarkenton left, came back, went to the Super Bowl again. And how many have you won? Uh, we haven't won any. Now, they also, their defense might have had the greatest name of any defense, the Purple People Eaters. And the weird thing is, they did not eat Purple People. No. They right. were purple, purple, and they were People Eaters. eaters. Yeah. Um, scary. We're tied with the Bills. The Bills have also gone to four Super Bowls and not won one. But they went to four in a row. They went to four in a row. Yep. Wouldn't that be the grace greatest for the fiftieth anniversary? Would have been the Bills versus <sighs> the Vikings. Oh my God. Somebody's finally going to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would to. I would love for the fiftieth to be. Green Bay versus Kansas City. And just 
nothing has changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same. Bill Brawler wrote this. Cashmere in, Stanley out. Oh. Ooh. Uh, David, O-Town, Booty, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Oakland, uh, they're losing everything. They're going to lose the A's. They're losing the Raiders. And the Golden State Warriors play right next to the Coliseum. And uh, the Warriors are going to uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Oakland's, being, Oakland's being fucked. Now, well, where are the A's going? The A's, they can't figure out what to do. They wanted to move down to San Jose. They had the territorial rights, but they gave it to the Giants. And now the Giants, they don't want to give them the rights back so they can build a stadium in San Jose. Okay. So the A's gave the Giants uh, uh, their territory down there. So now the San Francisco is not allow- allowing the A's to build anything in San Jose. Oakland, they're up in the air. They just had a meeting yesterday in Oakland about the team. But the city can't get it together money-wise. And then you've got the Golden State Warriors, which are right there next to the Coliseum where the A's play. And they're moving to San Francisco. So uh, Oakland's going to be left out uh, one way or another. Hopefully the A's stay. One of them has to stay. Now, let there me get the geography of this right. And I'm trying to figure it out. But do you know the way to San Jose? La, 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 la. You're going to the big, uh, uh, the pretty good prize closet, my friend. Yeah. It's the pretty good prize. Yeah. It's the pretty good prize prize closet. We have pretty good prizes. It's the pretty good prize. It's the pretty good prize prize closet. We have good prizes. David, <laughs> you live in Oakland. You're losing all your teams, and that's a shame. You win. It's the signed book. Wrestling for my life. Shined by Shawn Michaels. <laughs> and also signed by, not shined by. Ooh, ow. That's pretty good. You're welcome, David. You can read that when you're not watching sports. Uh, Raymond, Florida. What's up, buddy? Hey, um, just going back on what you were talking about a few minutes ago, when you talk about um, where the teams were originally, like you said, you like to say the Los Angeles Rams, but before the Rams were in Los Angeles, that they they were originally the Cleveland Rams. Is and, that right? Yeah, they were in Cleveland. And then um, Gail said, I like the San Diego Chargers, and it's strange because the 1960 season, the first year of the AFL, they were the Los Angeles Chargers. They were owned originally by uh, Baron Hilton, he's the Diners Club guy, and as we said, we call him Bolt, or we call him, you know, uh, the well, the, the I thought the that they Chargers. were called Chargers after the credit card. Is that true? Yeah, um, yeah, because their original owner was Baron Hilton, who was a Diners Club. Uh, <clears throat> it sounds like somebody else is going to the pretty good prize. Whoa! Closet. It's the pretty good prize. It's the pretty good prize. Prize closet. We have pretty good prizes. It's the pretty good prize. It's the pretty good prize. Prize closet. We have good prizes. Raymond, you win. Pretty good prize, if I may say so myself. You win the signed DVD, Angels in the Outfield, signed by Tony Danza. Whoa! Whoa! Nice! I would love to fucking Hold have that. Hold me closer. Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> Tony Danza. We got to, um, we got to break yeah. here. Now, Chris Stanley, uh, I was watching Smoking with Chris as he announced comedians are going to be on the show today. What he meant to say, Mr. Jim Florentine is here for the next break. We will bring him back in. Cashmere. You hit the long ball today. You killed it. Way to go. We'll be right back. This is Bennington. This is Jim Florentine makes. You know, he looks like a great closer coming out of the bullpen. Ready to shut it down. <laughs> I hear a Black Sabbath super nod and I'm ready. I'm running to the mound. <laughs> you found uh, this series? It's been uh, crazy, huh? Yeah. Um, I'm a San Francisco Giant fan, so they won three of the last five. Unbelievable. I knew going into the series the Mets were going to have a problem with the Royals. I just don't all my Mets fan go with the Blue Jays. They got sluggers in that lineup. You could strike right. them out. Pitching always beats hitting in the playoffs. But the, the Royals are built like the Mets. They're scrappy. They, they just hit the ball. They run. They go one base at a time. Everybody got to stick on the ball. They're playing National League Baseball. Yeah. That's what 
can kill you. When National League Baseball works, that 90-foot game, and everybody's slapping the other night. It was unbelievable. No way the Mets can come back now? Um, Possibly. Yeah. They, they need. They got to obviously got to win tonight. You know what tonight is, though? The Billy Joel jinx. Every time they brought Billy Joel out in the World Series, they've lost. Really? In history. Yeah. So t- they've done it twice. You know, he's like, New York State. Everybody's all happy. And then they get clubbed. So. Oh, is he singing tonight? Yeah, he's singing. Billy Joel is coming out. Um, I think he's got a new song called Can You Believe It? At My Age, I Got a Baby. And it's <laughs> yeah. so nerve-wracking. <laughs> so ner- I don't care how much money you have. That's got to be terrifying to be sitting there with a baby and you're, what, 68? Why wouldn't you get a vasectomy? I don't know. You know what I mean? At that point, you don't make good decisions with, with, with women. No. He doesn't have a good track record. No. He isn't. He only gets married when he's drunk. So, yeah, just nip that in the bud so you don't yeah. have to worry about that. Get that out of the way. Like, okay, I'm, I'm fucked up. I know. <laughs> this isn't good for me. I'm, I'm, o, I'm 0 for 11 right. in relationships. So let me, at least, let me at least get that snipped so I don't have to worry about this. That's the beauty of making billions, though. You're just like. You can just cover your mistakes, including marriage mistakes. But with a vasectomy, you're taking out the guesswork there. You're like, uh, what do, how should we handle this? There is no situation. But what a, after a vasectomy, somebody told me that instead of coming, your, your penis just whistles. It's just a <laughs> light... It's a soothing sound. <laughs> you imagine, though, the phone calls that his <laughs> wife or whoever she is made to her friends... <laughs> Going, oh my God, I'm having his baby. Yeah, and then the the, uh, the reaction on the other end. You, look, I know you like him, but you never know. You're set for life. You understand that you're good. Oh my God, what what? It's just everyone's like, oh my. All right. So it's a positive thing. Nobody in the nobody was worried that she was with. They're like, this is good. You've you've married a future for yourself. Absolutely. Like you're always going to be taken care of. There's going to be millions yeah. and millions. I also, I don't like the celebrities and Jerry Seinfeld will, will do the same thing where he's a Mets and Yankees fan. You know, it's not fair. you don't see Paul Simon doing both, right? Even though he was born in Queens, he sticks with the Yanks. Yeah. I feel like you got to make a choice. Why? Is, I, I thought Seinfeld was all in on the Mets, not the Yankees. I've seen uh, plenty of Yankees oh, okay. games wearing Yankees hats. Um, but he is Mets. There's no doubt Mets is his number one, but I don't, I don't think he has any problem with the New York Yankees and he's ready to ride that. Chris Stanley, you're a straight Mets fan. Straight Mets fan. 32 years. Yeah. Born and raised yeah. in Astoria, Queens. You yeah. go to the game tonight? I'm, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get Vito's a ticket. going. I, I heard he, he fucking was yelling in my face. I got a ticket, bro. Yeah. I like, well, I don't. Thanks for making me feel bad. Now, why are you a Giants fan? Because they were in Manhattan at one point? No, I, I, when I was a little kid, I saw Willie McCovey play. That's, then I'll do it for you. Player, uh, game in a week. Yeah. And uh, I was a lefty and I was a first baseman. I was the only lefty on my team. I played first base. That's all you could play as a lefty, especially when right. you played like, you know, when you started first started playing Little League. And uh, I just saw him and I saw him swing. And I'm like, that's it. I go, I want to be number 44. And I'm Willie McCovey. And that Isn't that it. funny when you're left handed and you're a kid? You're never going to be a catcher. You're never going to be a third baseman. You're never going to be a shortstop. You might get the outfield and then you go for first base. And when fucking somebody is right-handed, and they want to play first, the left-handed guys are like, what are you fucking kidding me? you got all these other positions you could choose, and just because you're fat, you want to play first. Fuck you. It doesn't happen that way. It's, it's true. Yeah. It's a very competitive spot. Yeah. It is. Um, I, I, I was actually a catcher, too. My dad had to find me a, a lefty's catcher's mitt. Right. And that was rough. I mean, I don't know where he got it from or whatever, and that was even... You know, that was even because I couldn't even they wouldn't even let me catch with a ba- with a first baseman's mitt. But it's also hard to throw to third. You 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 give up a little bit throwing the third. Right? You do. Yeah. Because yeah. of the angles and all that right. stuff. It I is. never thought about that, that I that it's a, a, a left handed spot. It makes perfect sense. Well, so. every, it's a but the thing is, uh, especially in Little League, as soon as a left handed batter comes up, the, you see the pitcher get thrown off immediately. You know what I mean? Like it is a it's a helpful thing from that point of view. It was it's amazing though because I pl- played baseball and then I played softball for a long time. As soon as a lefty comes up, lefty everybody moves lefty, over, yeah. and then I slap one down the third base line. Right every time I'm like, okay, keep doing it. So, no, you don't do it with a righty, righty, <laughs> right. and everybody slips. So why just a lefty? Like why is just a lefty <laughs> Bro, a pull hitter? You you put a shift on immediately. Immediately, and well, you don't 
don't know if, how quick the guy gets around on the ball, whether he's got a foot in the bucket. But <laughs> I, all of a sudden, you look over and the shortstop standing at second base on lefties. Yeah, you got the third baseman's almost a, a, a <laughs> yeah. playing shortstop, and it, and you know, especially a softball, I would yeah. just go to the batting cages and I would just hit to the right. to the left field every pitch. I'm like, this is the way I'm going to do. It. It's coming in slow. It's not like it's 90 miles an hour. I can time it. Yeah, you know, so that I used to do that all the time. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's how I got, you know, that's how I, I, I got in the business, basically, on TV and stuff like that, by playing on the comic strip softball team in New York City. Who was all on that team? Well, when I started going there, like, mid-90s, the team was, like, 2-14 and 14 every year. Uh -huh. Lucian Hall was the manager of the club, and that was his baby. He always, You know, he was the pitcher, and he, his whole thing was the, the softball team. And then all of a sudden, I mean, there's another comic, Eric McMahon. Uh -huh. There's a guy, Rich Franchese. And all of a sudden, we come in, we're trying to get in the club. You had to work the club, or you couldn't be on the team. We're comics from Jersey coming in, and they wanted nothing to do with us. They didn't want to put us on stage. They didn't want to know from us. I had long hair. They're like, who is this asshole? You know what I mean? So basically, I said, yeah, I can play softball. And they, they, the manager goes, well, come down you know, for practice before the season starts. And I'm hitting the ball around. He goes, oh, I'm going to put you on the team. We win the first game like 15-1 to 1 against the champs from the year before. The other guy, Eric, goes 4-4. Four for four. I go 4-4. Four for four. The guy's like, holy shit. But now we got to start working the club because we're ringers. <laughs> If we don't start working the club. So now he, he's forced to watch our stand-up, and he doesn't want it. He doesn't want to pass us at the club. He doesn't even know what we do, but he just just because we're from New Jersey. And white at that time. And white, yeah, we didn't, I didn't wear a yeah. bad sports jacket and a tie and, right. and hate my parents. So uh, then I remember he because he goes, all right, I have audition for me, and he watches my set, and he just goes, ah. He goes, I j all your jokes are just very sophomoric. <laughs> They're the kind of jokes you tell in a locker room, you nudge the guy next to you. He goes, I'm not a fan of it. He goes, but uh, you know what? Your voice needs to be heard in the club, and uh, I'll put you on during proms at 2 in the morning. <laughs> he goes, 17-year-old kids will like your jokes. I'm like, all right, fine. So that's how I got in, and then I got started getting TV stuff from that. Right. But it was only because I hit a softball. <laughs> only. And I'd be in the cages more than I'd be writing. <laughs> I, was, I go, I got I to gotta work on hitting it down that third base line. We got a big game. Four, if I went four for before I would get like five five <laughs> spots that week booked at the club. You know what I mean? I just knew yeah. if I had a good game, he's like, oh, I could call in an hour later. Hey, I'm open all week. All right. <laughs> Saturday night, 8 p.m. I'm, I'm, I'm like, this is beautiful. This is where I need to be. And then you go 0 oh, for 3, and, you know, uh, you're not getting any calls. Monday, 1130. <laughs> I would get, yeah. But that's exactly how I broke in. Jim Florentine, you're playing Caroline's Comedy Club. He's playing Caroline's Comedy Club tonight through Sunday, November 1st. Go to carolines.com for tickets and follow Mr. at Mr. Jim Florentine on Twitter. I picked a good weekend to do comedy shows in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> <a> big club. <laughs> Halloween and the uh, marathon. And the New York Mets, right. yeah, games Mets. three, four, and five, four miles away from uh, Carolina. Man, we are, yeah, it's, there's no reason to leave uh, at all this weekend. I didn't yeah. even think of that. You know, this uh, Saturday night is, I think, the biggest carb night in New York City because everyone feels like they need to eat spaghetti the night before the marathon. Yeah. I do even though I don't run. I go out and just, <laughs> I go, there's so many spaghetti specials going on. And I didn't realize this, too. It's apparently the big, um, Halloween is the biggest pizza night of like pizza places are just oh, because nobody wants to cook. No or... one wants to cook. The kid, oh. you know, they're taking the kids out. They're getting the kids ready to go out. Yeah, it's easy. Maybe they could even eat while they're walking around. It's the biggest pizza night, and I didn't know that. Yeah, tonight is also mischief night. So if you get the chance, that doesn't happen anymore. I used to love mischief neighbor. night. Me too. Me too. It was thrilling to me. Now there's no there's cameras. You can't do anything. Yeah, you can't hang the neighbor's house. You can't move. Uh, but. One of the greatest things for us is that a teacher lived in my neighborhood. Great. And that fucking family went <laughs> nice. through hell for like eight weeks. They didn't even just get the one night. Eight fucking weeks. So much that she used to hide. She was like a crazy old lady teacher. She would hide in her bushes with a flashlight and a whistle. Like she was, I don't know, like we thought English bobbies were coming to arrest us. <laughs> and as she would blow the whistle and hit us with a flashlight, we would just throw fucking corn at her right from there. Corn. We were just like, yeah. <laughs> Because one of the things, if you throw a bunch of fucking corn at somebody's window, it, it just sounds like 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 reindeer running across the roof or something. <laughs> I love terrorizing people. Can't do it anymore. Eggs. Eggs yeah. is a big thing. Toilet I, paper? Did you guys get down with the toilet, toilet paper? paper thing yeah, a little would, bit. Uh, would be only for trees and better if it was raining. 
But just being out at that time of the year when you're a little kid, it, it's a very exciting thing. And now, I guess, because people, they worry about wildings and shit, and so many people are armed. Like, we never thought, oh, we'll fuck with someone's house. You know, we'll go out, as we called it, minority knocking. And we never thought to ourselves <laughs> that we would be shot for that. <laughs> You know, although I did remember a guy chased us while he had no shirt on and fucking shaving cream all over his face. He chased and, you. Yeah, it was fucking terrifying. <laughs> what he, is that? Here's what he did. He came out from the house because we did it like five or six times in a row. And he came running around the other side. He, like he left the back of his house to run around and catch us. And I'm little enough that it's my actual neighbor. Like, I uh, I ran fucking 30 feet to my house, diving inside. Were you throwing corn at his windows? Yeah, or? just fucking with yeah, him and, yeah. and minority knocking and just being little. But it was like a fun thing. It was enjoyable for everybody. Yeah, you would always wake up in the morning like, oh, did our house get egged? Right. And you walk, oh, I guess people don't hate us. Right. Like, that was a thing. Or, you know, cars would be getting egged and stuff like that. But yeah, you go out, at, you know, 9 o'clock at night. You'd see other kids. It's pitch black. You got cartons of eggs or toilet paper or any Thrilling. of that stuff. And just throwing at people's houses. They're throwing it back at you. People screaming, chasing you. It was great. It was great. And then you could even do shit to passing cars. And that was fun, you know? We didn't have this in the South. Well, we you did didn't have, have Yeah, I mean, the, the, the it didn't play there as well. And also, like I said, one, well, what happened? Detroit started the Hell Night, and they literally started lighting places on fire. Right. Like, that was their <laughs> idea right. of a joke yeah. in, in Detroit. Doesn't somebody else call it something about cabbage or something? Well, I think there's some people call it Gate Night. It's Hell Night. It's Mischief Night. Did I make up cabbage? Something about cabbage, cabbage night, night or might something? be. I think that's in Ireland, and it, it <laughs> means, it's every night. Yeah, it means your grandmother's <laughs> rising from the grave. Our parents would let us out too, like they knew it was mischief night. Like, yeah. Just be back by like nine or ten. It's like so. Right. That was great. They're like, yeah, just go out. Don't be too crazy. Like, no, no, we're just gonna go see what's going on in case anybody else is gonna bomb our house. What do you got there? This is the names. Every uh, cabbage yeah, night. Is cabbage a night is a thing, same as mischief Wh night. Where's cabbage night played? Uh, what do they call it that? New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. All right. I never cabbage, called yeah. that. I never even heard of cabbage night. There, this was one that we would do to passing cars. You'd get kids on both sides, and then you would a, a car would be driving through the neighborhood, and you would yell "pull," and you look like you were get, grabbing a. Uh, a rope, but there was no rope, and the car would fucking hit the brakes because right. they thought they were running into a chain. <laughs> oh and then you God. would laugh, but then some guys would fucking just spin <laughs> the car around and try to fucking go crazy, and you had to just go run hit a child yeah. with their car. Yeah, and that 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 was the thing. Some guys get so pissed off over shit. You know, we used to do the snowballs, throw snowballs at cars up here all yeah. the time. We'd hide behind a house and then we'd have a, you know, there was a field in the back and we knew where to hide. So as soon as we hit the car, we just take off guys would be chasing us through the woods and stuff like that. But we just knew exactly where to hide, but constantly, especially if, if someone had their window open in the winter time, all right. like yeah. maybe it was a nice day. It was like 50, but there's still snow on the ground. You try to get, you get it in that window. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. It's an amazing <laughs> amount of fun. An incredible amount of fun. And then you'd always hear some story of some man had a heart attack, but I don't think it, that shit was ever they true. They just scared kids well, we, and try to get them not to do it. We would do a thing because there was a train tracks near us, right, and a place that you had to drive over. And if you got like a um, like a big fucking light, like a, fl like a floodlight, and we'd have that, and as the car was going over, you'd hit that light and a fucking this like air boat horn be like oh and fucking God. people would think that a train was coming and then you would fall down and you would laugh and every once in a while a guy would i will fucking murder you <laughs> you have to run you're like why is he what's he his wants plan to kill us what's his plan if he catches a child were you never young <laughs> i know some of those guys they're ready to beat up a kid very very quickly if i got hit by like if i was driving and someone hit my car with a snowball it would freak me out because that bit that really loud noise i'd want to kill somebody but i <laughs> i mean i did that my whole childhood but i'd be like what the fuck was that and then i would go chase somebody too um by the way uh espn this is just got announced kind of a spy report Spy report has pulled Grantland. The Grantland Whoa! is off the internet. One time, one of the biggest sports sites known to man gone now. That's what? crazy. Why are they pulling it? What's well, the reason? Bill Simmons, they fired him a while back, and he was the guy 
editing it, but... Well, Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell wrote for there, Chuck Klosterman, a bunch of big writers were writing Oh, yeah, it was gigantic. When it launched, everyone was like, this is going to be the greatest sports well, site ever. you know, you would get a sports article that would go on for nine pages. A lot of nice feature articles, yeah. especially from Simmons. He went on fucking forever. Right. That's crazy that they actually... And he uh, would always do stuff like, this is why the Giants are the Seinfeld of, you know what I mean? He's <laughs> making these fucking... Coughlin's Kramer. Yeah, it just happened uh, forever. Um, ESPN's taking a beating, man, in the ratings. Are they That's really? That's what's going on. That's why they're getting rid of Simmons. They got rid of uh, Olbermann and stuff like They're cutting all these huge salaries. I think uh, Jason Whitlock was part of Grandland, too, wasn't he, or something? There was yeah, a, maybe. Yeah, yeah, so all they're cutting them all. Everyone's going over to Fox Sports. Even the guy, um, uh, those guys that do the live TV show in the afternoon at ESPN. PTI? Colin, uh, oh, uh, Cowherd. Cowherd. He's over yeah. at Fox Sports. and I, their, their revenue is way down. They got a lot of competition out there. And ESPN's like a joke now, like watching it. I, don't, I watch the NFL Network or the MLB channel if I want to get football or baseball. I don't even watch ESPN because there's all just nonsense on there. Are you telling me you don't watch PTI? No, I'll Why watch. Um, I'll watch first take every once in a while, but then it gets <laughs> aggravating. Well, they show it at night yeah. all the time, so I yeah. catch it on the replay and they cut it down like a half hour. I like yeah. watching Mike and Mike in the morning. Yeah, they're good. Well, you got a good New York sports station here, though, with Fan. You know, yeah, I mean? Francesca is just a you know, yeah. I love him, and then I like Mad Dog here too. Yeah, Mad Dog is great. But the 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 connection you need to your sports guy, and you're willing to. Let him grow old on you. There's no other thing of entertainment where you would ever think, like anybody who does play-by-play -play on the radio, you, you, that's a job until you die. You know what I mean? It's never like, hey, we're looking for a newer, younger set. You don't want it. You want some old dude that you've, that's you that been there your whole life. Sports is perfect for that, and I don't know why, you know? Um, That's why I love John Sterling. People shit on him, but I like John Sterling. Because he's your guy. He, there's all this crazy shit that he says whenever but, anyone hits a home run. But you're a Mets guy. How does that happen? That's my dad was a, Yankee, was a Yankees fan, so he keep hmm. that. I'm like, Dad, let me put the fucking Mets, fit in, Mets game on. He's like, no, <laughs> really? kid. I'm the one who has the control. That sounds like it doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, nothing about <laughs> this that. makes Very sense seriously. at all. It's like you're a bandwagon jumper who jumped onto the Mets it's just... Within the past seven weeks. I don't know what you're talking about. It just about. seems like you bought your Mets cap a week ago. That's what it kind of seems like. Born and raised, Queens, New York. No, mm. it's hard to believe because between the Giants and the Cardinals, we've been locked in as National Leagues do dominating for a while. And I always will pull for a National League team. I'll vote league first over anything else. <laughs> you will. Le I am league first. I have nothing in sports. That you know, I like. I don't feel that way in basketball, baseball, but 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 in baseball, I gotta have league first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you, you know what hurt the Mets a lot with this thing is that layoff. Yeah, it hurt them. I knew it was gonna hurt them. I was saying, let it go seven games. You need some momentum going in. I, you know, um, you know when they, these baseball players play from spring training in February, pretty much every day, all the way to October, and all of a sudden they have a week off. As a comic, if I'm off, if I'm doing shows every night for yeah. five straight weeks and then I have a week off, I am rusty beyond belief when I go yeah. back up on stage, without a doubt. And and, and it's some, some teams it doesn't affect, like the Royals were in it last year, so they got a taste of it. But I knew going in, the Mets were on such a roll. They got a week off. That happened with the Tigers three years ago with sure. the Giants. They swept the Yankees like 11 nothing every game, like two hitters. Verland is pitching game one against the Giants. So like The Giants got no shot. He gets knocked out in the third inning. Sandoval hits three homers off in the first three innings. He's out of the game. They swept the Tigers. That's that's what happens. And that's what I was afraid with the Mets. It's the, it's the strangest sport that you got to do it every day and it's funny that you compare it to comedy because it really is true that, that like a comedian will have a week off and come back so rusty you know right. one week off and you know this because you're an actor as well and you get you know tv gigs and everything else to get back into it the first night is always a tough one. Absolutely. Even being on a, on a set, I remember when I was on a set of Californication, they're yeah. on there every day working. I'm in, I haven't done it in a while. It's 14 hour days and I'm the one like, oh man, I'm the one <laughs> fucking up my lines. I'm like, these right. guys are pros. Yeah. Oh, what's the new script? Uh, okay, I got it. I'm right, right in there. I'm like, I gotta, can I t take like two hours and yeah. pace back and forth? So I, kn and there, and there are guys who understand each other's timings. Yeah. And people who have done TV for 20 years. I mean, that was a, that was a show with a beat. But see, here's the thing about Jim Florentine that 
when he does these shows, you did it on California Vacation, you did it on uh, Louis' show, you appear to be menacing in front of <laughs> a camera. And you don't get that feeling when you're sitting here with Jim. He's a very kind-looking person, but... He's frightening looking <laughs> I, I, when I, he acts. I, I got no problem with that. I love yeah. doing that. I, yeah. But are you aware? Do you? Is that something you you turn on? You are yeah. you aware of it? Yeah. 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 Especially the you know the role I played on Louis. It's like okay, I know that I've, I've been working with this comic for fifteen years on the road. Right. This asshole comic who's just you know full of himself and just so I'm like and then when you know the New York headliner you know confronts me that I'm a piece of shit and I don't you know do good comedy I go I'm gonna give it right back to him. Uh huh. You know so I've been in that situation before when I first started in the business like I was saying from New Jersey I couldn't right. even get on a stage just because I was from New Jersey. I he looked at me like, oh, this guy's from New Jersey, can't be funny. What the fuck does that make a difference? Right. You know what I mean? The best comics came out of Boston still to this day. Yeah. Long Island, great comics. Jersey's got good comics. So it didn't mean anything. But I felt that just coming into the city and going, oh, this guy's. Well, so I knew to play that yeah. with Louie. Well, you know, a lot of guys, and they make a living forever, that work the South, the Midwest, they don't even think about going to L.A. or New York. They are great guys who have never once pulled in to do a set, and they'll fucking say to me, no, I do comedy for money. I'm not going to fucking go into New York and do a $20 set. Yeah. I get fucking paid two grand a week. That's it for me. Boom. You know, so that was the greatest thing about that. I'm sure Louie had picked up on it from working the road before. Like, I'm sure something, like he was in a conversation of that ilk, before. Oh, oh yeah, he he said he said the whole thing about the club owner. Yeah, um, saying you got to wear a sports jacket and be clean. <laughs> Don't say the word fuck. He said that right. happened to a club when he first started out and he was headlining. And the guy's I'm going to send you home. He goes, we'll send me home. He goes, and I've shared condos with that guy, you I'm, know, before too. I'm trying to say who think of there was somebody that I heard on a uh, on a podcast. I can't remember before saying that they were working in terrestrial radio. And their PD was bitching to them about bringing Louie in, like right before his show started, like right before he became the biggest comic in the world. There was a PD still bitching, like, why are you bring that guy in? He's, right. you know, he slows the show down. <laughs> <laughs> this is how fucked up people are that are bosses, how stupid they are. I, I'm going to try to remember who the hell that was. It's driving me nuts right now. Uh, Jim Florentine is in with us. Jim's performing at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight through Sunday, November 1st. Go to carolines.com for tickets and follow at Mr. Jim Florentine on Twitter. Uh, Shane. Shane, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, what's up? Uh, Mr. Florentine, I just wanted to thank you for that tribute show you did for uh, Dimebag Daryl last year. It, that was real. It was amazing. Well, I've never heard anybody speak so passionately about him. Here's oh, the thing about, I did a podcast about yeah. the tribute to Dimebag, yeah. But here's the thing about Dimebag. I think he died the same night John Lennon, right? He did, December 8th. So that fucks up any kind of remembrance thing for him. Well, the metal world is different than the right. Beatles world. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, whenever it comes up December 8th, no, but no one that was in the Pantera is going, oh, John Lennon, too. They might go, oh, they'll say it's like a Catholic holiday, one of those Catholic uh, days, Assumption Day or whatever. Feast days. Feast day, yeah. yeah. December 8th yeah. is like a Catholic, uh, you got to go to church. I don't even know what the fuck it's called anymore. But yeah, I mean, I was friends with Dimebag, luckily, and toured with him, went on the road with him and stuff, and it was just... Uh, it was brutal. I mean, how, I mean, just think about that today. I mean, the guy's up on stage. Someone comes up and just shoots him, and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to kill his brother too. He wanted to get Vinny behind the drums. He thought they broke up Pantera. The guy was mentally ill. His mom yeah. buys him a gun, and you know, he's waiting outside. And you know, as soon as he hears the band go on, he just storms to the front and goes up on stage with a long trench coat on. They thought he was just going to jump off the stage and stage dive. Right. And right. the guy was big, and the bouncers go, ah, you know what, just let the guy jump off, then we'll throw him out. They're like, we don't, we'll make it 50 bucks a night. We don't want to deal with this guy. Get in a big fight with him. And they didn't know, he, you know, he had a gun under there, obviously. And lucky that guy, there was a pro, um, you know, an off-duty police officer in the area, heard it on a radio, and had a freaking shotgun on him. Or he would that guy would have killed 20 people easily. Yeah. It's always it, like a lot of times you'll go to show and you're like, what's with them in the security? And then you fucking hear something like that story. I have people writing to me that it was Adam Carolla who told that story about Louis when he was working in L.A. Um, on his L.A. station. Oh, wow. Why are you having that guy come in here? <laughs> um, here is Eric in Nebraska. Eric. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, Jim, your, your bit there about the fantasy football. Yeah. 
uh, this past Sunday, my wife and I were at a sports bar uh, eating lunch, and there's all these guys sitting there with their Macs out and their tablets, <laughs> and their tablets doing their fantasy stuff while the games are on. And I pulled out my phone, pulled up that clip from ONA, and played it for my wife. And the bartender, and she's cracking up laughing. And I showed it to a couple of the people at the bar, and the bartender watched it, busted up laughing, turned around and walked over to the one guy and closed his Mac and told him, he says, why don't you just watch the fucking game? Real nice. <laughs> yeah, he, he just, the, the guy was just, he just, and the guy just looked at him, and the guy, and the bartender took my phone and played the clip and, and hit, you know, let the guy watch it. And the guy just kind of sat there and he goes, Oh, oh, oh I, well, but, you know, I make money off of this. And the bartender's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I could spread the venom. You won't even watch Red Zone, right? I love Red Zone. Oh, you do like Red I Zone? I love it. It's okay. great. So it's just fantasy itself. That, and now they bring it up during games and it will actually even say people's fantasy points on ESPN. Um, I forget. I guess it was... Uh, they brought they brought it up uh, in the Giants game last week when they had like a bat, like a four string running back was doing well. It's like yeah. I guess he's going to be number one in the waiver wire this week oh, for your God. fantasy leagues. <laughs> oh <laughs> God! You, I mean, if you watch NFL this year, every commercial is is fantasy football. Yeah, there's every two seconds is a right. fantasy. It's it's non- maddening. Nonstop. Like the people that, the people that are playing fantasy football, they they already know this is going on. Right. I don't know who you're advertising <laughs> to. It's you're true. not getting anybody else. Right. There's and, people are going to hate it, and there's going to people that are going to love it, yeah. and they, they're, they're already bolts. They already took yeah. sides. There's well, not going to be anyone watching football going, fantasy football. Yeah. Hmm. I've never the, heard of this. Just why, the same reason that you never had to do commercials for cocaine. <laughs> People are going, like, no, I haven't been doing enough cocaine lately. <laughs> it's a gambling thing. If you gamble, you want to gamble, you don't give a shit what you're gambling on. That's why they say you will never go to a horse track that doesn't have betting because no one would go to watch horses run around a fucking Gives track. a fuck. <laughs> yeah. They care about game. They should just have a, a fucking track that just has numbers pop up and you just bet numbers <laughs> yeah. all day. And people would go. I'm there. I'm or there right you, now. And you know from being from Florida, they had yeah. the dog track was another one. And then Highlight. Highlight, I don't even understand. <laughs> I know, I've been there a lot. Weird. And I don't know. I'm saying to people with my thing, did I win? I know. <laughs> Did I fucking win? The highlight was more fake than wrestling. Than no. Oh, professional yeah. wrestling. If you went to it, it was so... If you were onto it, yeah. and you could see, watch how fake it, it was unbelievable. It was pro wrestling. Yeah, it was just a way of, let's bring a bunch of tourists in here and take their money. <laughs> and I don't know how they do it. A lot of people would say... People would actually say, did you see this? We got ripped off. I go, I don't know. Right. I don't know what <laughs> fucking happened. There's a wall. There's guys, and they have baskets fucking tied to their arm. <laughs> It's insane. And the dog track is also hilarious because there's nothing pushing that dog at all. Yeah. Who knows what's going on through his fucking head? You know? But it's, you know, you're out at night. It's 81 degrees. It's awesome, at that fucking dog track. Midnight. You, you know, you're... to that dog track? Yeah, in the St. Pete. That dog track is the shit. Yeah, at Gandhi Boulevard, right? The yeah. Gandhi dog track. Yeah, it's amazing. I know a guy who played trumpet there. That, when you're playing, <laughs> when you're playing trumpet at a fucking dog track, you know that's a big time. Yeah, that's that's a part that you could. I guess you could still say show business. Right. <laughs> I'm yeah. in the biz, but barely. I'm in the biz. Yeah. So you're worried. Uh, well, I guess you'll get Yankees fans coming out this weekend, right? Mm, People who don't, don't. The problem is Halloween parties. Halloween's yeah. on a Saturday. Anyone. In a relationship is going to a Halloween party. And they you have no certainly choice. don't want to see Halloween fucking people in your show. The, the comedy seller will not let anyone in with a costume on Halloween. Good. I don't know what Caroline's. They got a little more room in that room. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> than the comedy seller, you're packed right. in. Who knows? Lewis, hey, Lewis you don't Lewis want a bumblebee done. taking up six seats in the comedy seller. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline's holds 450. They might have the room for a fucking bumblebee. Yeah. I'm really proud of this place for people not dressing up. And there was a Halloween party here. Yeah. <laughs> there was a Halloween lunch here, and people still didn't dress up. I think it's funny that the seller's doing that because you get there are certain bars uh, in the city where if you're dressed up, then they'll, you know, you'll, you don't have to pay the cover or whatever. Right. So people are saying, no, this is a costume. But the seller, they're trying to say, no, I dress like this every day. <laughs> right, I yeah. swear to God, please let me in. I'm always on my brother's shoulders with a long coat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be a rough weekend. But, whatever, yeah. you know, you got the Mets, you got the, the, um, 
you got the what? What's going on on Sunday? Is uh, uh, the Sunday is the, the marathon? Sunday, Sunday is the marathon. It's the only race that goes through all the boroughs. Every borough is represented. You immediately run out of Staten Island. You're only in it for a second. You run through Brooklyn, run through Queens, in into Manhattan. Barely touch the Bronx. Back through Manhattan, twenty six miles. Uh, they run right by my house. Yeah, and. The thing is, if you are not right up front, you don't have a chance to win this thing. <laughs> I mean, there are 28,000 people who don't stand a chance of winning. It's It's got to be frustrating. Just give up. <laughs> they won't. <laughs> Which in the first five minutes. Yeah. Forget it. This isn't going to work there out. There are plenty of the guys in that are, that aren't in any kind of shape, too. Just mm-hmm. fat guys running incredibly slow. Just so they could say they, they ran. Yeah, yeah. They, they said, I did the marathon. I got the T-shirt. I get the... That kind of baked potato wrap that they put on oh, around yeah. you and they That's get a nice. free orange and a bagel. Yeah. <laughs> the uncomfortable um, part is the amount, because I'll, I'll always down there at Dunkin' Donuts and the people that'll go under it because they have to shit so bad. And a lot of people shit in the street for the marathon. A lot of the runners will shit in the street. Oh, God. Yeah. A lot of street shitting going to be taking place. It's <laughs> all that pasta. Yeah. You lose control sometimes. Yeah, the, I guess uh, the just bowels is what they say. banging around, you know, for 26 miles. Will they stop and shit or just shit as they're... No, like they're a going. horse. <laughs> like a horse. They just keep going. Well, cause they, cause they, don't, <laughs> they don't want to lose pace, you know what I mean? They're, like, they're trying to get that, you know, well, that's the five minute mile. <laughs> None of those Ethiopians are shitting. Oh, no. It's always the fat guys in the back. And then you'll be like, you'll see like, you know, they got the guys, uh, and I hate to say that they're cheating if you're paralyzed and you're using a fucking wheelchair, but when you see that the guy's resting coming down out of the bridge, like at 65 miles an hour, it's a fucking cheat. <laughs> the guys that are on that thing, like, they'll, they'll just be, like, pedaling with their hands. They got this. Yeah. They're much faster than the Ethiopians. It's not fair. No, it's, you know. Shouldn't the marathon be like almost like porn when a girl's going to do anal the next day? She does an anima the night before to make sure she's all cleaned out. Yeah, that's tell you good... so you don't shit in the street. They should probably say porn rules. <laughs> yeah, right. be... And you guys know yeah. the marathon is porn rules. You, you carve it up right. and then you hit the anima hard. An- anima. Yeah. And remember, once you go black, that's it for you. You're not <laughs> keeping... You're going to have a reputation. About You're not it. having the same fans you had before. You'll have the fans that are into that other thing. I'm careful with the ass to mouth still. still. I don't know how that applies here, but right. it does. Um, good. Mr. Jim Florentine is performing at Caroline's Comedy Club. That's normal. Really, really really bad, man. (laughs) Jim Florentine is performing at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight through Sunday, November 1st. Go to carolines.com for tickets and follow at Mr. Jim Florentine on Twitter. All right, Doug in Jersey wants to jump in with this. Go ahead, Doug. Hey, uh, Jimmy Florentine. How's it going, big man? What's up, man? Hey, back in the day when you were dating Robin Quivers, did you ever eat her ass out or what? Jesus Christ, that came out of nowhere. Uh, he was going to talk about something else. Um, and that's between the two of you. That's none of our business. That's your own private business. I was business. never a big ass eater. Well, I, I, it was a couple <laughs> oh, okay. of my it day. But, but yeah. once, a, you know what I mean? I try it. No, I did. Absolutely. Yeah. There was a few, it, you know. But yeah. I was never, I don't know. This is another thing about Jim Florentine. The ladies love him. I know. He's got a very big female Beloved. following. No, I don't. Yes, you do, man. Because every time I talk to women, they're always... Well, when we did that on Mass, there were people that were saying to me how attractive you were. And I was like, you mean both of us together with the chemistry? And they're like, no, 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 just him. <laughs> just Jim. Well, I'm single now. I don't see this following. You know what? You know what's going to be at Caroline's this week? Because I work guys. on that metal show, guys in Scorpions t-shirts. Right, they're gonna want to. Th- Did you see the blackout tour when Dokken <laughs> opened, and they had a fight on stage? That's what I get after the show. Do you see them like that? You're losing them when you do non-metal material. A lot of people are like, dude, I thought you were gonna talk about metal. I'm like, this, 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 this three guys with Iron Maiden shirts, and there's 370 other people that have no idea about that show. I go, we'll talk about Number of the Beast after the show. You guys will go out doing stand-up though as a show. 
show, and Eddie's on the road with you, right? Yeah, that, that's our specific audience. Like yeah. next weekend, I think we're in like Chicago and Detroit, and then Syracuse and Buffalo doing that. And we do Eddie goes tell stories, and me and Jameson do stand up, and I do it more geared towards music and stuff like that. So but this is what's great about that. First of all, that you guys got a TV career, which was shocking, but then Eddie got a live appearance career. You know, because Eddie used to go out play records or whatever years ago <clears throat> or be there to, you know, interview uh, a performer. But now he can go out as a live performer. Yeah. yeah, he just tells, like, funny rock stories, hanging out with, you know, and goes yeah. up there and pretty much does it. Yeah, so he's doing great with that. And then he hosts all these rock concerts and stuff. So yeah. he's, he's, he's heavily in demand because of our show, which is great. And yet stays... Really bitter, and I don't know how <laughs> he does it. By the way, Eddie is another one of those guys that you brought up, Gail, because it's kind of a Philly or Jersey thing. As the angrier they get, their voice goes up higher. Yes, he definitely has that. What the fuck is wrong with this place, Ronnie? The best. What the fuck? <laughs> They're not even fucking radio guys. And I've known it. He was the first person I met in fucking New York. I got to NEW, come into town. I was so excited. They said, "Stop in." Ed, Ed Trunk will show you the board. We get there, and he basically told us, don't unpack. He said, this place is fucking sucks. Don't <laughs> unpack. And we're like, well, we are staying. I appreciate your thing. And I was home that night just looking at the fucking ceiling. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's like, I, and he's don't never unpack. he's never changed that attitude since. Yeah. He always has a problem. That's great. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we we try to get him going. Sometimes he needs a little like get him on edge before he right. goes on stage. Some people need that. Yeah. Some people like to fight, get in an argument with their girlfriend or wife before they get on, get a little rage going. Other people don't want that. It all depends. But me and Don know. Yeah. All right, Eddie's he's too loose or whatever. Let's get under his skin, then let him go out there. Well, you're a guy who's pretty easygoing and happy that you've had the career that you. But Jameson is even easier. Like it's all good to him, no matter what the gig is. It's, hey. I can't believe we get the chance to do this. It's always great. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, which makes people a million times easier to live with. But you could, I think, give Eddie everything that there is, and there would still be something stuck right. in his crawl. He just can't stand <laughs> it. Um, here is uh, um, here's, uh, Brandon in Texas. God, Brandon. Hey, Jim. Uh what do you have going on with Digital Playground right now? Um, I just did some, uh, I just did like a, um, it's like the American Idol for porn. I was one of the judges for uh -huh. Digital Playground. Oh. <laughs> the I American just, Idol for porn. Yeah, pretty much. They're looking yeah. for the next big porn star, and then she gets a contract with Digital Playground, the big right. porn company. So I was one of the judges. I just got back from L.A. yesterday with that. What do you judge? What's the criteria that you're judging on? Um, you know, they come out, they you know, we do a Q and a with them, ask yeah. them some questions, try to throw them <laughs> off, whatever, all that stuff. And then they do a whole, uh, a photo shoot uh -huh. and you know, they strip down and stuff like that. And then they do like a, a stripper scene on a pole and then they do a masturbation scene <laughs> and you have to judge that. Now is there, it's beautiful. <laughs> now like American Idol, is there a fun medley of those who were rejected? From oh, the... some of the people were really bad at it. She's special needs. So <laughs> no, I think they weed it down to like. You know, like seven or eight an episode, and there's five different episodes, and they cut it all down, and they pick it, and then there's finals. Who else is judging for this? Uh, Nikki Benz is a porn star. Yeah. She's one in this. Uh, the woman, Holly, I think of Madison, she's like a professional photographer. Sure. She's been in the business a long time, so it's us three as judges. So that's a, so another sweet gig for you. Yeah, I just, yeah, just knocked it out like six days, uh -huh. shot it, got it done, and, you know, and then they air in a couple of weeks, it's going to start. And then the acting career is really in demand now. Yeah, it's been going really well, yeah. And they call you now, rather than you going out looking It's a for lot stuff. easier, because there's clips of the Louis episode right. I did online, so you send it over, like, okay, you're in, you know what I mean, like that, instead of even auditioning, or, you know, sometimes you still got to audition, but, um, no, it's been going great. Well, like I said, he can be, like, David Duchovny is, you know, a great actor, and he looks so frightened <laughs> during his episode <laughs> of his show, Californication, and... Uh, when I'm watching Jim, I'm like, I hope Florentine's acting here. And not, he's not just going to light up David <laughs> Duchovny and ruin his career. But it was it was really, really cool stuff, man. To see it's, weird. it's so funny how I got the Louie episode. So I'm on a set of California. This is like two years ago. Yeah. And Pam um, Adlin, 
Yeah. Is that her last name? Okay, so she was Louie's wife in the uh, yeah. original Louie. So we're, well, I'm there for like four days. So we worked together the one day, and she goes, she's close with Louie. She goes, I talked to Louie last night. I told him how funny you are, you know, working on the set. And he goes, and Louie goes, I got a great idea for him for my show. I'm going to write him in an episode. That was over two years ago. Right. So I don't hear it. I'm like, oh, cool. He doesn't tell me what it is. I have no idea. And then in like January, my manager gets a script. Go, Louie wrote a script for you. He wants to be a part of the show. He wrote it specifically for you. Read it to make sure you want to be on. I go, I don't even have to read it. I don't know what it is. I'm in. He goes, no, I want you to read it. And he wrote that script because what happened is I have these prank call CDs I did years ago, They're terrorizing amazing. telemarketers. There was a call in there where a guy's trying to sell me some toilet thing, and I tell him I took an up, I have to take an upper decker because there's so much <laughs> shit in the regular toilet. I got to sit in the top of the tank yeah. and shit up there. because. And Louie always, whenever I run into Louie, he goes, that, that call, turds it's called. It's so funny. Oh, my God, an upper decker. It's hilarious. So Louie writes the episode, the Louie episode of me dying at the end, taking an upper decker and hitting him. <laughs> My head so that's basically how i got on the louis show two years later yeah. and the, uh, the ending is i die i hit my head die the season ends and the episode ends and that's it goes to black i'm so amazing too that if, if your name doesn't pop up in that one from doing one thing if pamela adlon doesn't say your name to him probably doesn't make the light bulb go off absolutely that, yeah, hey, definitely does it. yeah and then he's thinking all right he's a comic he's been on the road he, yeah. know, he knows this part he knows you know this guy shared condos with other comics so i'm not just going to hire some actor right. has no idea i got the feel for it i know how to act like an asshole you know and trying to avoid that guy all week when you're staying in a condo with him I, i'll tell you this is another <laughs> thing you talk about him for being so smart pamela adlon is so fucking great in everything that yeah, she does i loved her on californication you know across the board from when she was a kid on and now he's doing a show producing a show kind of based on her uh it's brilliant brilliant to be able to pick that up yeah she's great um do the read dude do the read <laughs> Jim Florentine is performing <laughs> at Caroline's Comedy Club tonight through Sunday, November 1st. Go to carolines.com for tickets and follow at tickets. Mr. Jim Florentine on Twitter. This is the worst voiceover guy in the history of radio. <laughs> uh, a regular guy is perked out and sweating with a Mets cap on. Percocets are performing. <laughs> I want you to go over the eye bank because you're a sports guy. I want you to see, tell us, Jim, whether this works or not. It's a hockey it's uh, a hockey coach throws a puck to a kid and see whether it's all is fair in this type of lifestyle. So you can see the coaches, see the little kid with the red cap here, and he's throwing it to the kid, and look at the old man, grabs <laughs> the puck and sticks it into his pocket. Bringing pain everywhere. So play it one shitty. more time. Play it one more time. Shitty old man. Yeah. It's, Look at him, too. Yeah. It's shitty, but it's absolutely great. You know what I mean? Yeah, he didn't even, you know. Yeah. That was a good catch by the old guy, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. That oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm well, going to get him fr credit for that one, for sure. Well, here's the thing. You know when you're an old man, nothing means more to you than a puck that you can take home and play with, with your friends. Um, yeah, he, he's probably been going to games for years, never even came close to a puck. And he's like, fuck this kid. I don't care. I don't know him. I don't give a shit. The same thing literally happened to me when I was four. Four years four. old? I was four years old. A puck came out over the ice. I don't know what game I was at. And I went to run. It was about four seats away. And I went to pick it up, and an old man had jumped three rows down just to steal the puck before I could grab it. And it was awful. It but really made me feel bad. But why do you think that you deserve it? Because of your I was four. few Youth. years on the... Yeah. You know, our children of the future, right? Yeah. So that means it's our time to get yeah. you. Yeah, okay. And then they can have it in the future. But we're the ones that are going to be dead, not them. Get yeah, this now. old man doesn't have many pucks in his uh, in his future. Well, this old man, he had one. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. I love the chick with the mouse ears in the front row. This is me if the puck gets on. No! Don't hit me, puck. <laughs> Look, no one even reacts at this place. You know, no one even gets mad at the old man or anything. <laughs> yeah, nobody goes, come on, he's a little kid, give him the puck back, nothing. Well, they'll always show that, I mean, it's one thing, like, let's say it went up in the stands and the old man got it. 
But here you're actually taking a gift for him. Yes. They're saying like, this yeah. is for that little boy. He didn't throw it into the stands and the old man grabbed it in front of the boy. He was literally throwing it to that little boy. <laughs> so you poached that puck, man. You poached it. Also, what decade did this old man step out of? That's a very classic look he's rocking. The kind of sweaty fucking comb over, right. big, giant, weird sweater, <laughs> and the old man friend that he has. Yeah. Like two old guys going together. I think he actually shakes his head at the little boy, too, right after he catches it. <laughs> um. Here's Boris in Toronto. Boris. Wow. Thank you, Ron, for quoting me earlier about uh, Kashmir's performance. Oh, people love, say, yeah, people love Kashmir. So I have uh, so many different things to say, but I'm going to start with this. Chris Stanley. What's up? Thank you very much for helping me fall off the wagon. Jesus. Last, last Christmas season when they were playing best of and you were repeatedly Picking on Shelby as you got progressively drunker helped me stay sober. But this week, with you perking out, I have the day off today because my birthday is tomorrow. I'm 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 tripendicular, and I thank you for it. Uh, okay, start. I, I feel yeah, bad. Yeah, that's I feel really bad. I'm not blaming you. I'm thanking you. So, no. so if I may, if I may say. Uh, thank you for picking up my call on Jimmy Florentine. Jimmy, you are a comedy god. I really appreciate everything you've done in the past. And if you could answer one question, is Robin as much of a beautiful woman as we suspect she is? This, uh, <laughs> how many years? Yeah, she is. Uh, but how many years have you guys thank dated? You. This is like I don't know. It was like uh, almost ten. Yeah, and it <laughs> still know, seems to be following you two around. <laughs> Who would want to be asked about old girlfriends and boyfriends? It's going to be terrible. Why do it? Yeah, they would do it like in front of like you know a new girlfriend and stuff right. like that. They didn't care. Yeah, people don't care uh, be, because they're just so because they think about robin so much that you guys would come it would be like a couple would come up to me when we were dating like in a club afterwards or whatever and go and with their wife and go dude can i smell your fingers Ugh. like they would say stuff like that i'm like okay if i can smell yours cause, right or like there's robin shave i'm like oh let me can, can your wife <laughs> let me let, let me see your wife's pussy let me see if she shaves <laughs> i go if she shows me then i'll tell you if she shaves or not how about that and like, well, dude, that's that's my wife i go yeah i know well that's my girlfriend you're asking about if she shaves i don't you know jim florentine street justice <laughs> <laughs> You know what I used to do? Guys would come up and go, dude, can I smell your fingers? Right? Mm -hmm. They would just do, you know, I was, when I was dating them, so I'm like, so I go, yeah, sure. And I put them in the nose. I go, I just had them in my asshole. They go, dude, that's fucked up. I go, you wanted to smell them. You wanted to smell them. They were just in my ass. Got you. Okay. Yeah, I got you. You smelled ass. Got you. <laughs> but not the ass you wanted to smell. My own. Different ass. Man ass. Uh, Sean, Pittsburgh. What's up, buddy? Hey, that guy last night, um, I, it was a bit of a delayed reaction, but he got buried for doing that. I and mean, people flipped out once they saw the replay. Did it anybody? Was, uh, yeah, but what is it about Pittsburgh? You need to see a replay before you're outraged. You well, couldn't have done it in real time? Initially. Yeah. You know what? It's the same thing happened. I was at a game probably three years ago, and they were giving their sticks out at the game. And this 40 year old woman, I mean, literally still have a three year old's hand. And I almost, I had some beers in me. <laughs> Almost punched her. I mean, I was fucking flipping out in her face. People, it was the most infuriating thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Unbelievable. You gotta just let it go. You're hockey fans. You gotta, yeah. you, know, you gotta let it go. You can't hold I mean, on that just, tight. Yeah, I just, no, I just didn't get it at all. Awful. All right, Sean. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the great Jim Florentine in here with us. You can go see him at Caroline's. All weekend long. Always great to see you, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. You, uh, you are absolutely one of the funniest people on the planet. And you wear it well. You wear it well. You just seem like no matter what happens, you show up. You're always a pro. You make it happen with, no matter what your gig is. That's what it is, man. That's yeah. the thing. It's like, all right, I'm in this situation. Yeah, I was yeah. on a, basically a, a site, you know, talking to <laughs> girls that want to do porn. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to make this work for a week. <laughs> like, this is what I got to do. And then I'm, uh, I'm at Caroline. I'm like, and I make this shit work. I'm, yeah, like, hey. Caroline. I'm like, hey, I'm getting paid. I used to cut lawns in Florida, 25 a day in August. Okay, so I'll fucking, I'll do whatever I got to do. If I got to play a bar in front of four people, there was a really small crowd last night at Caroline's. Yeah. Like, oh, I feel bad. I go, I don't give a shit. <laughs> fucking just, I don't care if there's two here. I'm doing an hour. No matter. <laughs> He's the best. Uh, that's it for us. See you guys on Monday, and we'll see you again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. 
We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974.